The medical evidence is staggering and unnerving. As a doctor, it is my obligation to tend to the health of my community. I take this responsibility with great seriousness. I respectfully urge the committee members here to take their role as policymakers with the same level of serious, seriousness and pass this measure to protect our KP. Thank you so much. Thomas Davey, in support. I, I failed to mention that um, for this measure, we have 400 testifiers. <laughs> uh, Lynn Robinson, Luna Derko, in support. Lynn Shannon Rudolph, in support. Leslie Jones, in support. Gail Dornstreich, in support. Susan Sims, in support. Louida Trahan, in support. Irene Dominique, in support. Noella Takai, in support. John Bach, in support. Karen Shun, in support. Bernie Stratman, in support. Sam Smith, in support. Harry Yoshida, in support. Maria Walker, in support. Jean Frost, in support. Brad Edwards, in support. Susan Windle, in support. Nastasia <coughs> Hill, in support. John Gellert, in support. Mary Marvin Porter, in support. Cookie Shimizu, in support. People should stop me if they are here. Um, Eileen Nita, in support. Beverly Montel, in support. Shannon Bates, in support. Lorna Cummings, Poe. In support. Nancy Redfeather, in support. Linda Emerson and Arian Barr, in support. Denise Skirchev, in support. Zarko Pekanek, in support. Lynn Albrecht, in support. Paula <coughs> Avkosova, in support. And Char O'Brien, in support. Elkis Rutschland, in support. William Mon Molden, in support. Dana Allen, in support. Crystal Todman and Rachel Berger in support. Steve Weiss in support. Ruslan Subaro in support. Deb Mader in support. Marjorie Irway in support. Ariana Feinberg and John Reagan and Leslie Reagan in support. Jennifer Milholan in support. Rosemary Griffith in support. Deb Mader in support. Celine Janis Janisewski in support. Autumn Rose in support, Lucia Yu and Rick Morse and Lisa Kerman in support, Bert Peruta and Natalie Axon in support, Morningstar Peak in support, Paula Cohen and Brian Burt in support, Eric Porheis and Chris Delacruz in support, Irene Soloway and R.M. Owens and Louise Simro in support, Dina Edmondson and Patricia Rubio in support. Faye Pacheco and then Faye Wallace in support. Bob Babson, followed by Faye Wallace, followed by James Cole in support. Susanna Minicielli in support. Thomas Tudard and then Pat and Glendita in support. Robert Necker in support. Jennifer Barreto in support. Patrick Forlotti. Uh, from Lucy Foundation in support. Mark Gordon and James Long in support. Cheryl Sterling in support. Leslie Patton and Jesse Willett and Lisa Kirvin in support. Martin Riz uh, Ravinsky in support. Is there anyone in the room for that pitch? Susan Strong, followed by Philip uh, Winkles, followed by Arts and Doak, all in support. Patty Valentine, then Keel Mailani uh, Von Go in support. Marilyn Mc, uh, McGator in support. Ken Clyde in support. Shelly Mack in support. Judy Rosenstern. Then Greg Pontus in support. Carolyn Barrow in support. Carla uh, DeCrona in support. Amy Leroy in support. Stacy Vosberg and Deborah West. And Taja Yamamura in support. Karen Baxter followed by Ken Likotu in support, Malia Damon and James Hedgecock in support, Kenneth Lickout and Susan Oliver, followed by Derek Bickerton all in support. Teresa Boatbrand, Katie uh, Settlemeyer, both were in support, Claudia Herbert and Melinda McBride in support, Maury Sullivan, 
Susan Al Arquette, both in support. Sherry Moore and Katie Romanchuk in support. Daniel Plackenhorn in support. Jen Young in support. Judy Flanders in support. <coughs> Brett Peters and Jeff Knowles in support. Janice Palma Glenny in support. Cassandra Fortin Clays in support. David Cosgrove and Stephanie Austin for each in support. Donna Perkins, followed by George Hoods, both in support. Melinda Buck and Lynn Van Deren in support. Deborah Tuman, Denise Henning, Annalise uh, Malone, all in support. <coughs> Mateja Frank, and Lori Nakamura Higa, Jonathan Boyne, and Jean uh, Hannigan, support. Ernest and Marilis Jepson, in support. Thomas Randall and Sierra Knight, in support. Toby Ewan, in support. Leslie Ackerman, in support. Poonani Rogers from Ho'okipa Network, Kauai, in support. Hali Ishiro, in support. Mark Sheehan, submitting comments. Diana Asher and Linda McKimson, in support. Rebecca Roberts, followed by Mike Dikaza, in support. Homai Stone and then Luan Lee, in support. Karine Chang, in support, and Jeff Andy, followed by Ray Pace, in support. Cindy Lance, Richard Conrad, Mercedes Minot, and Susan Westmoreland, all in support. Mapu Peters, in support. Richard Whale, in support. Cassandra Virgil, uh, Vigil, out, in support. Evan Williams and Pamela Williams, in support. Andrew Pendleton, in support. Huey uh, kind of, kind of in support. Ann English in support. Jennifer Powell in support. Dr. Joe Cohen in support. William Harris and Summer Bradbury in support. Samantha Burbridge in support. Elizabeth Levings in support. Henry Curtis, Life of the Land in support. Ann Becker Gomers in support. Noreen Doherty and Sue Curley in support. Ann Klimke in support. Catherine Reynolds in support. John Naylor in support. Michelle Nipali in support. Jerry Petra in support. Gary Johnson in support. Marianne Scheinman in support. John Gallagher in support. Barack Obama. Takes no position on this. in support. Patricia Blair in support. Kenneth Sakai in support. Uh, Seven uh, Galambos in support. Tim Lyons. Thank you, Chairs. Um, I'm Tim Lyons. I'm with the Hawaii Pest Control Association, so um, I have a different slant on this. Um, However, you know, it's our members that primarily treat structures for pests, and we do know that there's some exclusionary language sort of hidden in the definitions, and we would just respectfully request the committee uh, to establish a separate subsection that makes it clear that that is excluded. Um, there's other language in there that then says all buffer zones, all schools, all structures, all whatever, so it could be easily misinterpreted. And, um, we would just point out, um, as much as everybody, some people are, are not so prone to pesticides that even right now while we are using pesticides, residents in Hawaii are losing $100 million a year to termite damages, and there's $241 million a year to school in termite damages. So we would hope that you would entertain that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. <coughs> move next to Ruth Lewis in support. Tom Pasquale in support. Sydney Zari in support. Lynn Austin in support. Kelly Cochran in support. Deanna Farr in support. Merrick Heisel in support. Amy Wood, Wood, WLB in support. Bill Cyber in support. Richard Mindar and Lewis Thompson, followed by Sharon Cushman in support. Sophia McCoy in support. Carol Remington in support. Dennis Klimke in support. 
Deborah Erickson in support, William Cote in support, and Joe McDonald in support, Vince Kenai Dodge in support, Jay Holt in support, Julian Miller and Jan Barish in support, Timory Tim McDonald in support, Michael Bond in support, Ryan Ramjet in support, Councilwoman Karen E. R. from Big Island in support, David Laborski in support, Virginia Bennett in support, Laura Kahu Lamu, forgive me, in support, Joanne Freed in support, Barbara Borgnino in support, Jonathan Boyne in support, Kathrama Brooks in support, and Jean Butler in support, Leslie Coulter, followed by Kathleen Notestone, both were in support. Sandra Bunnell in support, Leanne Fox in support, Carly Birch in support, followed by Maria Itzel in support, Mitsuko Hayakawa in support, and then Maureen Lang Langberg in support, Hoku Kabebe in support, followed by Ruben Chong and Susan Garment, and then Lori Field from Ben Parenton in support, Ellie Field in support. Chairs, vice chairs, and members. My name is Ali Friel. It's my first time ever testifying at the state level. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. I'm here to express my strong support for SB 793 and for buffer zones and disclosure of pesticides. I'm a resident of Kauai, and on Kauai uh, last year, two years ago, we worked hard to pass a similar type of bill with buffer zones of pesticides, and you know, thousands of people marched. Um, and three out of the four counties have worked to create protections for their communities, such as in this bill. And at every turn, we've been told the county is not the place to do it. It's the state's role. So now we're here. And even during testimony on uh, Bill 2491 on Hawaii, uh, representatives of the chemical companies and the research operations testified that they were in support of the intent of the bill, but that it was the state's role to legislate and not the county's. So I'm so excited that we're here and that this issue is being heard. And um, I know that a lot of other people are going to testify to the scientific evidence and the you know, public health concerns surrounding this. But I just really wanted to express um, just a personal, uh, I guess, and a strong desire to see this happen for my community. Thank you. Thank you, Charlotte, today. Samantha Sherline, in support. Stanley Garment, in support. Mari Ono, in support. Dorothy uh, Binder, in support. Manu Manu, in support. Gina Dear Leland, in support. Kelly Wassel, in support. Tina Wildberger, in support. Barb Travis in support, and Terry Travis in support. Uriel Blair in support, Maria uh, Lanker in support. Belly, uh, Bella Doty in support, Stephanie Haddad in support, Jade Chang in support, <coughs> Michelle, uh, Michelle, uh, Michelle Sylvester in opposition. Bobby Lempert in support, Ian York in support, Teddy Ego in support, Doug Vincent in opposition. Jay Duquette in support, uh, Mr. Shepard in support, Renee Kester in opposition, Harvest Edmonds in support, Makana uh, Kaholelu in support, William Bremen in support, and Joe Amsterdam, followed by Brad Parsons in support, Frederick von Essen in support, Dennis Yamaguchi in opposition, <coughs> Shelley Pollock in support, David Thompson in support, and Claudia Rice in support followed by Mona Weigand in support, and Patricia Phillips in support. Bennett Mizaluka, Hawaii Crop Government <coughs> Association, in opposition. Yeah, if it's okay, I could present a testimony for ATA. Of course. Okay. She's right here. She doesn't care. She doesn't care about you, or does <laughs> care about <laughs> That I do, that I do. I would defer to him. <laughs> You're better looking. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Kirby Kester, uh, President of the Hawaii Crop and Premium Association. 
and we respectfully oppose this bill. And um, we disagree with the idea that there's widespread problems associated with pesticide applications in the state and the need for these extensive and unprecedented measures. The proposed legislation assigns arbitrary restrictions and conditions that go far beyond science-based regulations, which we can uh, which we stand behind. The US EPA um, currently evaluates and registers pesticides to ensure that they will not harm people, non-target species, or the environment. And after thorough risk assessments, the EPA determines if a pesticide can be sold and used. It dictates where it can be used, the amount, frequency, timing of its use, and how it will be stored or discarded. The EPA does, um, determines the conditions under which the pesticide can be used based on, also based on ongoing research of any possible health or environmental effects. So the EPA does this, they're charged with this. These measures undermine their role and will harm, potentially harm Hawaii's farmers without providing increased safety. Before any additional state pesticide restrictions are imposed, they should be determined to be justifiable and necessary. The Hawaii Department of um, Ag has jurisdiction over this and, um, and can protect the public and if it determines that further regulations are warranted. And there's plenty, of, I mean, there's a lot of laws in 129 already. I mean, people forget that just, I, I've, I've held a sprayer license for about 10 years. I don't have one currently, but you know, it's a $5,000 fine, a private fine, if you if you misapply a pesticide, which we are regulated and, and, and inspected. It's up to 25,000 civil penalties. It's not an unregulated um, event that agriculture does. I just want to make that clear. We respect. So we respectfully request that these bills be held rather than create new and arbitrary laws that will make it more difficult for farmers to stay in business in Hawaii. We support the concepts and other pesticide related bills introduced this session, such as Senate Bill 734, that would give the HDOA and the University of Hawaii increased funding and capacity to more effectively perform their roles, including educating growers and others to ensure proper pesticide use, assistance in implementation of pesticide drift reduction strategies, and appropriate enforcement capability. We believe that a strong state pesticide regulatory program is essential to assuring the public that pesticide products are used. Um, thanks for this opportunity to submit testimony. Thank you. We probably have questions at the end. Okay. For Colleen Hunting, uh, Farming and Fishing Association. Hello guys, uh, you know, my name is Makani Christensen, thank you for the opportunity today, and I oppose this measure. Um, I'm here because I'm a fisherman, and we created an association because a lot of the same issues that we're facing all the way across the board from hunting, fishing, and farming are the same. Um, we, the people that feed Hawaii, are actually being pushed out of Hawaii, being pushed out of our own backyards. And this bill here, for small farmers, has detrimental effect for actually growing local growth. Um, and as a public citizen and as a person that lives here, you know, 20% of our crops, or 20, 30% of our crops are grown here. We're, we're failing as a, as a state. But what this does is buffer zone. Let's say a university or a school, so all of a sudden development started to come out. These farms have been there for 30, 40 years. All of a sudden, it has a chance to lose everything that they work for. Are we going to allow that? Maybe we maybe need to rethink the law, maybe write it a little bit different. But we can't allow small business to fail, especially our local farmers. Otherwise, sustainability is just a word that we're really not serious about. So I appreciate your opportunity today to uh, speak, and I oppose this measure. Thank you. Thank you for coming forward. Gordana Leonard in support. Carolyn Pate in support. Helen Sarong in support. Fabian Christie in support. Joy Burke in support. Brian <coughs> in opposition. Shannon uh, Papalimu in support. And Wyoni Dickinson in support. Donnie Gray, followed by Sheila Smalley, both in support. And Astrid Watanabe in support. Shab Kalasa in support. Angel Whitlack in support, followed by David, uh, 
or Dave Kaiser in support. Nate Hayward from the Hawaii Farmers Union in support. Delano Carter <coughs> in support, followed by Julie Carter in support. Tony Sylvester, in opposition. Marilyn Powers, in support. Camille Chong and Paul Lit Littlewood Littleton in support, followed by Warren Watanabe, Maui Farm, Maui County Farm Bureau, in opposition. Christine Beltran in support. Brian McColeth in support, and then Debbie Holloman in support. <coughs> Jane Spur, followed by Jeff <coughs> followed by Eve Powers in support. Renee Gangs uh, Gangs in support, and Sandra Lane in support, and Callan Nakasone in support, and Kalana Poe in support, Rahana Jasmine in support, <coughs> Catherine Casoro in support. Then Linda uh, Menzies in support. Dina <coughs> Mazierski in support, followed by Christopher Correa in support. Then Kathy Shimada and Jean Hodges and Todd Bloom in support. Victoria Yoakum was in support and Carol Sappington also in support. We had John Gordines in opposition. <coughs> Tia Person and Ann Evans were in support and Elizabeth O'Connor in support. Jody Mahan. Susan Vickery in support. Moana Waiteka was in support. And Makota Ian was in support. Christine Vizi was in support. And Teresa Tico was in support. Alan Gottlieb, Hawaii Cattlemen's Council, opposition. John Fitzpatrick in support. And Carol Culver in support. Followed by Alan Kremat in support. Then Nikki Moss, Janava Baldassari in support, Alicia Malafiti. Hello, well, chairs, members. Alicia Malafiti, actually testifying on behalf of Crop Life America. And uh, we manufacture the register and register the pesticide products that are used for agriculture. Because um, we've been talking a lot about the schools. The one correction I would offer up is the statement about the 33 states um, using the, this kind of uh, statute. I actually found one. It's really not this kind of language. It's not buffer zone. In fact, none of them have anything to do with egg. What it is, it's called integrated pest management. And Centers for Disease Control actually has outlined a wonderful policy for schools to adopt. And in fact, New Jersey, the New Jersey School Integrated Pest Management Act of 2002, and it's wonderful because integrated pest management is what farmers use every single day. So what I was thinking, maybe the best first step is to ask the schools, it could be individually and it could be as the department-wide, ask them to put into place integrated pest management strategies as a way to really keep the KP safe. Because I think you've heard from some of the farmers already, it's, it's, it's not really been the farmers. Here on Oahu, within the last 18 months, I live in Eva Beach. We had an incident in Eva Beach, three schools, one in Hawaii Kai, one in Waipahu. Guess what? No farms around there. It was the neighbors. Okay? It was folks in the area misusing pesticides. So, I mean, here's three on Oahu that we just experienced where the kids had to be evacuated. But yet, here's language really targeting farmers again um, with buffer zones. We, I, guess, I guess the idea is let's start, at, let's start at the school first and get them to start implementing policies and practices that will keep the KK safe. And let's see if that works first, since the most recent incidents obviously were a, a problem. Uh, we do like Senate Bill 734. It's, it's, it's exactly what everyone's been complaining about. Department of Ag, they lose all their inspectors. We went through the RIF, the reduction in force. S Senate Bill 734 would give them the tools and resources to do their job. It would give them the inspectors. It would do the educational piece that we all stick, need. Stick to this bill, yeah, and that's why this the education piece. And I think that that's why the testimonies and what these other school districts and what the Centers for Disease Control puts out, education is the number one issue. Um, just as an example, I just went through a whole can of flea treatment um, for the animals we take care of. 
Uh, one of our volunteers used it inappropriately, and they put uh, our, not only the animals at risk, but themselves and the other volunteers at risk. And I had to go back to them and have them read the label specifically, and that's the number one problem with most of us as homeowners. We, people don't read the labels when applying um, pesticides. And it's there for a purpose, it's to reduce risk. We've got little fire ant problems, we've got beetle problems, we have all these pest problems. And pesticides serve an important purpose if used appropriately. And they, they, the regulatory process is intended to reduce risk. I would just suggest that maybe this idea of integrated pest management be revisited as a school-based policy first, and let's see if the schools continue to be safe after that. Um, and we can address the issues with the farmers by providing the tools and resources to the Department of Ag. Thanks. QB Maddox was in support, as was uh, Michael Brosnan was in support. Lori Farrell, Hawaii Farmer Ranchers United. My name is Lori Farrell. I'm project director for Hawaii Farmers and Ranchers United on Hawaii Island. We grow 93% of all ag revenue on Hawaii Island on 683,000 acres of land, $194 million of economic revenue, almost 3,000 farmers. <clears throat> farmers are land stewards, and we understand firsthand the need for crop protection methods and pesticides. We live in our communities, and our children go to local schools. Homeowners use 10 times the amount of pesticides than agriculture does. None of the incidents in recent years involved agriculture, yet we're being targeted. Activist groups have targeted farmers with anti-farming legislation. Perception is not the method to set public policy. No facts equal no farmers equals no food. We, we oppose Senate Bill 793 and the other bills, farmers and agriculture, is not the enemy. We feed and we help sustain Hawaii. Mahalo. Heather Salmon is in support. Wade Holmes in support. And Shanti Brown in support. Samantha Bardwell, followed by Elise Travis, followed by Miles McKay in support. Then Urban Bush and Sally Waite in support. Dore Shin in support. And Victoria Cannon in support. Chelsea Heller and then Denise Woods in support. Vicky Vieira in support. Robert Patrici in support. Jessica Villafranco was in support. Joining uh, Camilla, opposition. Rami Islam in support. Alex Franco in opposition. Carly Williams in support. Hi. Um, my name is Carly Williams. Aloha, mahalo for your consideration of my um, testimony here today. Um, I first, I hear everyone talking about um, this is an anti-farming bill. I just wanted to point out that I've, within the past month, I've volunteered on three different farms, all of which don't use pesticides. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, but my testimony here today um, says, sorry. Um, I'm just testifying mostly as a resident as I do live on the North Shore. And as I'm sure a lot of us know, this is where a lot of the chemicals are being sprayed and stuff. And as far as our knowledge goes, these uh, restricted use pesticides include um, 2,4-D and dicamba and uh, glyphosate. And the thing is, is that um, these chemicals are being banned kind of around the world or restricted or strictly regulated around the world. And um, every day I feel like I'm seeing new evidence uh, coming out about how these chemicals are now being linked to behavioral issues and um, digestive issues and endocrine issues. And it kind of, the list just keeps going on and on. And so, um, as American citizens, I feel it is our right to know exactly what is being sprayed, how much of it, and where. It is our right to hold our local governments accountable to be aware of this information and make decisions regarding the safety of the land and people accordingly. It is our right to live freely from the pesticide drift, which um, I've seen it on many videos already, that's carried by water and wind. 
And that's where the buffer zones come in handy because I do feel like we need to uh, protect our residential and school areas and, and also our organic farms who are within the area too. So please pass uh, uh, Bill SB 793 and make the point of decision to serve and protect the people from these chemical companies and not small farm companies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Williams. Alan Takamoto. Okay. Alan is a lobbyist with the uh, biochemical companies, Monsanto. Good afternoon, chairs. My name is Alan Takamoto. I'm here on behalf of Monsanto Hawaii. Safety for all is Monsanto's number one priority. All of Monsanto's employees who work with pesticides receive extensive training. We strive daily to ensure a safe working environment for our employees and guests. We are very aware of our surroundings and take every measure to ensure our neighbors are not impacted by our operations. Monsanto is also committed to being a responsible steward of the land. We utilize soil and water conservation practices in all of our farm operations. We diligently comply with federal and state laws that govern responsible pesticide use, and in many cases have taken additional stewardship measures. Many farmers, including Monsanto, use an integrated pest management program that use all aspects of pest and disease control that don't necessarily require the use of pesticides, but also incorporates other techniques and natural occurrences. Monsanto and its employees and their families are very attentive to the health and, and well-being of the communities where we work and live. Our employees and their families also attend the nearby schools, child care facilities, hospitals, and community centers from which everyone benefits. Basically, we are people too. We care about the environment. We don't think that this bill is the avenue by which we believe that we can work with. There are existing rules and regulations and requirements that we take very seriously when it comes to pesticide use. For these reasons, we respectfully, we respectfully oppose these measures on Senate Bill 793, 1037, and 797. Thank you. Michelle McKay, who's in support. Adolph Helm, who's in opposition. Elizabeth Kemp, in support. Therese Amato, in support. Paul Oshiro, in opposition. Brittany Bowers. Here. Paul's here. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members. Paul Oshiro, representing Hawaiian Commercial Insurance Company. Uh, I am very respectfully in opposition. Um, by mandating the imposition of pesticide buffer zones, this bill may prevent the continued use of lands that are presently being impacted by agricultural production. Uh, and that these buffer zones will only be applicable to certain agricultural entities. So we note that this bill may allow other non-agricultural entities and other persons who use the same restricted use pesticides and general use pesticides to do them from the provisions of this bill. In addition, chair members, um, should new sensitive area facilities, schools, hospitals, you know, list of, you know, listed in that definition, um, should new facilities be situated on lands adjacent to an affected commercial farm in the future, um, new buffer zones may be established. And the uncertainty of these future buffer zones being established as a result, as a result of actions on neighboring lands likely to be problematic for farm and agricultural business planning. Uh, in summary, uh, we believe that um, the federal and state entities that presently oversee pesticide regulation and use um, possess the technical knowledge, the expertise to implement additional pesticide restrictions and regulations when warranted and necessary to protect, to further protect employees general public in our environment. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Brittany Bowers was in support. Chris Manfredi. Yeah, 
afternoon, chairs, <clears throat> vice chair, members of the committee. Chris Manfredi, representing Hawaii Farm Bureau. I'm a citizen of Kau, so it's nice to be here with each of you. Yes. Wish it was under better circumstances. We have to respectfully oppose this measure, um, this group of measures. Uh, I'd like to speak generally uh, to the measures and then specifically on, on the one on the agenda now. Um, that was a lot of testifiers. Would you say 400? Yes, we have, I can give you the total number that we projected, but that was before late testimony. Does that, in, does that include the president or no? <laughs> He's coming soon. Uh, we have 384 in our first count, and it was uh, 362 in support and 22 in opposition, including you. Thanks. Um, as I said, I'm speaking on behalf of White Farm Bureau, and I have a number. It's 1,982 member families who couldn't be here today, and I've been asked to represent them. Um, we oppose this measure. Uh, restricted use pesticides are intensely researched, very effective, and efficient. Users are licensed and trained. This training, existing regulations, and this efficiency leads to the use of fewer pesticides, which in turn helps the environment. Uh, farmers are following the law. There are ample laws and regulations in this area through the EPA and Department of Agriculture. Violators are currently liable for significant fines, civil penalties, and can be found negligent in a court of law, and in some instances face jail time. Moreover, agriculture is a minority user of restricted-use pesticides. Our information shows that agriculture only uses 13% of restricted-use pesticides. We're waiting for the, the figures for the rest of the state. State and county governments and the pest control industry are the majority users of restricted-use pesticides. Studies have shown that pesticide residues are more prevalent in urban centers rather than on farms. We always talk about sustainability and food security. Sustainability is economic, social, and environmental. These measures would force farmers out of business, especially the most vulnerable of them. At the same time, we're claiming we're working toward food security and sustainability, and I think those two are at odds with each other. Hawaii Farm Bureau also supports SB 734, which would give more tools to the Department of Agriculture in terms of human and financial resources to regulate in this area. And that's something that we welcome. Furthermore, strengthening biosecurity funding reduces introduction of pests in the first place, including weeds and disease. So we welcome the opportunity to strengthen biosecurity measures to stop the bugs from getting here in the first place. We also support buy local measures, which also cuts down on invasives. There's a lot of the invasives that come in come in on imported food and plants. Chris, please restrict your testimony to this measure. Certainly. But buying local is a function of competitive price. We, we'd like to address all the factors that place wise farmers and ranchers at a competitive disadvantage to our mainland counterparts. In other words, let's take a holistic approach to this. Those are my general comments on this group of bills. Specifically to this measure, and I don't know if this is intentional, but there's a definition of a watershed and then buffer zones as it relates to a watershed. A watershed is everywhere. So even a buffer zone that is one inch would eliminate the use of these products everywhere. This building is in a watershed. So we asked the committee to look at that language. Um, but ideally, we'd like to see this bill help. Thank you for the opportunity to present our comments. Thank you. Thank you. Angie Troxell was in support. Mary Miller in support. Joe Ritter was in support. Liddy Morgan Bernal in support. And Cindy Goldstein from DuPont was in opposition. Tanja Miller and Pat Geegan in support. Followed by Deborah Zeisman from Good Beginnings Alliance in support. Mark Phillipson from Syngenta opposition. Jasmine Hong 
in support, followed by Malia Nobriga Oliveira, from the, that was the Association of Hawaii Civics Clubs in strong support. Iris Iwami, in opposition. Sarah Date, in support. Kaliko Amona, in support. And Ellie Beal, presenting, uh, presenting comments. Um, we're going to take a, um, a pause on Senate Bill 793 and then come to our late testifiers. We have another measure on our 340. She's gone? She's passed away? No, she is still among us on Earth. She just wanted to get in. Okay, strike that. We'll keep going. <clears throat> Senate Bill uh, 793 will proceed. These are the late testifiers, and um, as we come towards down the home stretch, there are a few hundred more <coughs> testifiers. Um, then, if I've missed anybody, I'll give them the opportunity, of course, to testify. Juanita Brown Kawamoto from the Environmental Caucus of the, of the Democratic Party. Last year, I, last time I saw you, Malamo was yelling at us both. I was exactly <laughs> right. I to yell today, yes? But aloha to Malamo. Yes. She's, she's dear to me in many ways, too. I just tease her. Aloha, chairs. Aloha, esteemed members. As chair of the Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party, we strongly support seven, Senate Bill 793. My name is Juanita Brown Kawamoto. Respectfully, science and research is relevant based on individual or particular conditions. Impacts from these pesticide processes require constant testing, and the testing of these pesticides only account for particular situations. The testing is never truly over, as we find over one and a half million people and wildlife continuous, continuously falling ill in their own backyards. Let's not forget, the intent of this bill is focused on large commercial users who choose to withhold from our people their agricultural pesticide practices. The Kiki Oka'aina deserve the civil right to know. Maoli Hawaiians practice ahupua'a, traditional Hawaiian farming feeding a million people without modern pesticide use, and continue to practice today ahupua'a to feed and protect the huikula na kauhale, or our village. Small family farms who practice aloha share the concerns of their communities <coughs> and let their, new, let their people know what's going on. Let their neighbors know what is happening. The need to hold accountable commercial use of pesticides and its impacts on Hawaii is a priority. The public safety and health and welfare of our keiki and our kupuna should be a priority. The process set forth by this good legislation provides all citizens of the state of Hawaii the knowledge. People are the priority. Mahalo for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Terry Powell in support, Catherine Paul in support, and Keith Ranny in support, Chamber of Commerce in opposition, Miley Bendor in support, Catherine Velasquez in support, E. Yadao in support. There's additional testimony from the Association of Hawaii, Hawaii Civic Clubs in support, and Natalie McKinney in support, Elaine Nakayama in opposition. Matthew Ross, in opposition. Oh. Well, Senator Green, um, I'm not a farmer. I'm a commercial fisherman. Um, I was compelled to testify today because um, I was originally here on another, another measure related to my profession. Um, however, I have at least three friends who either own or work on small farms who would be affected by this. Um, what concerns me is that I see I see it becoming harder and harder for, for producers in Hawaii, um, including farmers, to, to survive. Um, and many of these measures, they may seem like good ideas on paper, but it, it's the kind of thing where large corporations could be able to get away with them, but smaller businesses can't. And I see that, I see that in my field as well as farming. 
Um, with the, the buffer zones, that's fine if you have very large fields, but small farms, it could wipe out the whole team. Um, I'm, I, 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 sorry, I don't know what to say. Um, but um, one of the things I see, I'm, I understand where the supporters are still coming from. You know, I know their heart is in the right place, um, but I just, I just hope that in the future there'll be oppor opportunities to, to farm fish, just produce our own food in Hawaii for our, for our children. It's sad to see when people, people who grow up here have to move away to Vegas or California just because there's no opportunities left. We need to diversify our economy for everybody. Um, where I'm coming from, so please, please look out for small farmers and go past them. Thank you for clar clarification. So I think Mr. Ross brought up some good points. That's why we have um, thresholds, and they would be, you know, modest, and it wouldn't affect small farms. That was the purpose. I do appreciate you bringing that up. Next, Patrice uh, Goodermont in support, followed by Clay Posner in support, and then Freddie Von Essen and Lisa Donovan in support. Elena Kogan was in support. Robin Hammer uh, Hammerquist in opposition. Rory Marsh in support, followed by Shayla Moon in opposition. John McHugh provided comments, then Catherine, uh, Catherine El Elias was in support. Howie Simon provided supportive comments, and then Stuart Coleman from the Surfrider Foundation was in support. Karen Kriegmeyer was in support, and Gordine Kakalia was in support. Patricia Blair was in support, and Dean Sensui was in opposition. We had Cheryl Royce, followed by Michaela Freitas, followed by Mark Sheehan, all in support. And then Catherine Betts, Hawaii State Commission on the Status of Women, in support. Nina Cherry was in support, and Paul Kumara Jr. in support. Patrick Haley Simmons was in support, and Tara Grace in support. Rosemary uh, Toussaint in support. Jean-Luc Bazzoli was in support. I called Sally Wade earlier in support. David Mullenix in support, and Lucia Maya in support. Amy Perusa in support, followed by Dave Kaiser in support. Then Mary Lax and Serena Adolfo in support. Then Marcy Colton Criley in support, and Tanya Emerald in support. Kelly Kim, Kathy Mach, and Eric uh, Arian Barr in support. Tulsi Greenlee in support. Shelly McGregor, then Michelle Matson. Then Sally Jane Bodnar were all in support. Lauren Rego was in support, and Melissa Virbina in support. A woman named Tulsi was also in support. And Johnny Felipe uh, Bellao in support. And Colin Dana in support. <coughs> James Kulololio in support. And Kate Watanabe from Unite Five, Local Five, I'm sorry, United Local Five in support. Ruth Lewis was in support, and David Contreras was in support. Sarah Luth was in support, as was Lorraine Zane, and then Karen Anobjes in support. Lilia Widmer and Albert Sekirja was in support. Then Janin Platt and Carol Hart were in support, and Allison Yim, followed by Joanna Wheeler, Kathleen uh, Ganyon, followed by Bonnie Rasmussen in support. Dylan Hooser. Well, hi everybody. Thank you for uh, hearing us today. I um, appreciate for having you guys have us here. Um, I uh, am here in support of 793 today. And, uh, you know, I don't even know where to start after hearing all this testimony back and forth, back and forth. We just want help. You know, buffer zones and disclosure shouldn't be so hard. We just want to protect our schools, you know. I hear we're, we're highly regulated. I've heard we have one inspector on our, on, in our county. I've heard they spray over 200 days out of the year. That's just one company. How highly regulated is that? Come on now. Make a mistake on one day, you're going to be regulated? That one guy. That's one company who's sprayed over 200 days out of the year. The only reason why we know that is because they're in a lawsuit. The rest we don't know. That's why we need disclosure. We need to know what's going on. I mean, we need to know. It's a basic right. You know, somebody sprayed next door to your house 200 days out of the year. You don't want to know? I do, and 
that's why we're here. And we're going to keep coming back. So please help us. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Joe. Leslie Wingate was in support. Juanina Kawamoto was in support. And Kyle Nakasone was in support. Followed by Janet Pappas. Pappas, excuse me. And then Deb Trelinsky was in support. Barbara Butler and then Angela Flynn. Followed by Marla Bender, all in support. Leona Thompson was in support. And Cynthia Montgomery. Hey, Please. Appreciate you guys this time. My name is Leona Thompson. Here from Kauai County. Again, always a pleasure coming to the Capitol. Um, I had a bunch of stuff written out on my phone that I was going to read out. Um, but after hearing again the testimony from today, it clearly states um, in 793 and 1498-C, it says it in dash A and B as well that um, it should only be mandatory for commercial ag that only uses excess of X pounds and X gallons of RUP. So this is not going to affect our, our local fishermen or our small local farmers. And it saddens me that these huge multi-billion dollar chemical companies have convoluted our small farmers to think that it will affect them. And I come from a community that's very close. They are affected. These families have come to members, leaders in our community. This is the only way our, our, our leaders have literally told us we have to come to the state. Because every time we come to the county, they send us into litigation. Every county. You all know it. Um, I'm going to keep it very brief. And it's just, please help us. This is, again, it's disclosure. We cannot make correlations. Doctors cannot diagnose if they don't know what to look for. It's, it's very basic. Um, Again, missing work and school yet again, but it's okay. <coughs> I have faith in this process, in this committee, and I really, truly appreciate all of your time and, and listening to everyone. So thank you. <coughs> thank you very much. Kathleen Horgan was in support. Thank you. Hello, I'm actually um, Kendall Ranga, but I'm reading for Kathleen Horgan as she cannot be here. Also flying over here from Kauai County. Um, Kathleen lives in, in the affected areas and has this child as well. Uh, she says um, she's in full support of SB 793 and uh, that is being applied near schools in sensitive areas. Um, <coughs> Waimea County Middle School has had several incidences in recent years where evacuation of the schools were required due to pesticide poisoning and other schools have also had evacuations incidents. Doctors and nurses had no idea what the teachers and children had been exposed to, and follow-up testing was not performed until years after exposure. Still yet, they found restricted-use pesticides used by the chemical companies on the school campus where the children eat, learn, and play, as well as in their drinking waters. At least 26 schools in Hawaii are located within a mile of large agriculture companies that spray restricted-use pesticides. Hospitals are also in sensitive areas on Kauai and Waimea and in Lihue. I live Kathleen lives in Kekaha on Palilalu behind Kekaha Road. She sent you a map when looking on where she is located, within about 500 feet of where the ABC leases to these chemical companies. My son, she also sent you a picture of him, preschool, is within a half mile of the Manaw fields leased by ABC. He suffers from asthma that began after he started school there. When we lived in on East Kauai, it would be difficult when, than when he lived on the east side of Kauai. It would be difficult to determine the cause of the asthma with any certainty. However, it is certain that he and others like him will be especially sensitive and susceptible to pesticide exposure from nearby sources. Children in, generally, in general are naturally more sensitive to chemical exposure. In both locations, I cannot find out what chemical will be sprayed, where or when, either in advance or after the fact. The Good Neighbor Voluntary Program that the Department of Agriculture started does not provide this kind of information. It does not even provide information about general use pesticides that likely, likely make up over 50% of what is used by the large com companies. It does not provide protection for those that are truly their neighbors. The chemical industry will tell you their product is safe and have been tested extensively. They have not been tested on our Ohana. The labels say they should not be used near schools and children and sensitive areas. If the chemical industry is concerned about more than the corporate bottom line, then they will not fight this modest measure to protect our health. I ask you to look deep within today and do what is best for our Ohana, our future, and pass SB 793. This is a very
very modest pesticide reporting bill without delay. Respectfully, Kathleen Morgan, kick off our buddy. That brings me to, to the end of the list that I had uh, for late testimony and uh, earlier testimony. Who else do I have? Uh, to show hands of individuals. Okay. Why don't people um, just come up by a row if they'd like to testify in person or just stand on their testimony in support? It's up to you or opposition. Up to you as well. So please come up. Please state your name and then uh, so we can enter into the record. Aloha, my name is Chelsea Matsushima Contreras. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, the members of the committee for um, allowing me to be present here. It's also my first time on a state level, you know, conducting a testimony, so mahalo. Really, um, I'm also from the county of Kauai. Um, I am a mother of two. Um, any parent um, here would know that their children is their priority, like as you were saying earlier, that our kupuna and our children are priority. And as an educator and as a mother, um, I'm in fear of where I need to take my kids to school because I'm not too sure um, where in Kauai we have these fields and without the disclosure of whether or not you know they're surrounded by these fields, I don't know if I can trust where my kid go to school. My three-year-old, um, special to me, she's got diagnosed with autism. Um, all this talk, you know, with autism, I want to know how I can service my child. He needs extra care. Um, I've been unemployed for a year because I put that on the side to take care of my child. Um, you know, so with that being said, um, I'll keep it real short because I really had a full speech to read, but by hearing what I've been hearing from both sides, um, I'm with Dylan and Leona. I just want help. I'm a helpless parent here. I'm a human being. I have the right to know. So do my kids and so do my fellow, you know, my community period. I am a community advocate. <laughs> For health and wellness in Anohola, and I'm in love with my kids, and I would just like to for you to feel that emotion that we just need your help. We are not here to affect small farmers. I, I have a garden. My my friends, I eat out of my friends' gardens. Like we are going to be greatly affected if these companies are able to come past Wailua River, which they will soon, if we don't know what it, where they are. You know, and my kiki, they reside in Kapa'a and Anohola. I do not want to see any of these people on that side of my island. And I speak on behalf of my family who live in Kekaha and Waimea in Ahanapebe. My cousin was greatly affected in that Waimea Canyon school. She's not written a testimony quite yet, but I, she will, because that's how powerful it is. And for all the other voices who cannot be spoken, I'd be more than happy to be seen here more than once this month or next month, because I will, I will put the funds down if that's what it means to come here and speak on behalf of everybody on Kauai. Mahalo. Who would, would like to be next? Um, Aloha, Senators. Thank you for hearing this important piece of legislation. My name is May Foyamano. Um, I'm a family nurse practitioner. I have 15 years of experience in acute care. I have a master's degree in science and nursing. Um, and I've spent the past three years coming and testifying on any bill aimed at regulating the seed industry here in Hawaii. I'm not anti-business, anti-agriculture, or against jobs. I'm here because oftentimes in medicine, we know the value of prevention. Immunizations, breast cancer screening, pap smears, well child checks are all important services we provide to promote and protect health. The old adage, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, is so true. Why is this bill a bill about prevention and health? I did a quick um, PubMed search and found 23,131 journal articles about pesticide exposure. CINAHL had similar results. The data is out there to support the fact that pesticide exposure has negative effect on human health, period. So much of the data has been synthesized that the American Pediatric and ACOG, American College of Gynecology, have official policy statement. And trust me, getting consensus from a bunch of physicians is very <laughs> similar to getting consensus from a bunch of politicians. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> several, several committee meetings, um, 
So official policy is actually, it's a really big deal when it happens. It changes the way that we practice medicine. When you listen to testimony after testimony um, of people who live next to these fields reporting bloody noses, seizures, birth defects, neurological, cognitive disorders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, please believe them when they say it's related to the high amounts of pesticides being used by the seed companies. Because in all honesty, it most likely is. The seed companies know just as well as I do that chronic exposure is hard to link to disease. However, more and more longitudinal studies are coming out and we can no longer ignore the correlations and we can actually prove direct causation now. With the proposed buffer zones and disclosure, local researchers will actually be able to do the studies. And if what the seed companies are saying is true, and we have nothing to fear, then they should welcome this type of legislation with open arms, because they will be vindicated. However, I feel like they must know something I don't. Otherwise, they wouldn't have spent millions of dollars in Maui to oppose the GMO ban, and they wouldn't be engaged in lawsuits with all of our counties. It is your responsibility as lawmakers to make decisions that protect life and health, and you have the opportunity now to provide sensible, really conservative legislation to do just that. I just humbly ask that you pass this through today and be part of creating a legacy of health for our beloved island home. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, next test, other people put their hands up, please, if they'd like to testify. Aloha, Senator Chair and Vice Chair and all the members of the committee. My name is Tiana Lorenzo. I submitted a late testimony, but I just wanted to say on record that I strongly support SB 793, and I thank you all for um, allowing it to come to hearing. Um, just like uh, our my fellow Kauai folks that flew over here, you know, we are going to continue to come because we are experiencing I am talking to our communities, we are hearing the stories, we are seeing the effects, and we just want answers and help. And again, like we said, it took two years to push forward for that ordinance um, that we just passed. Now we're being held up in litigations for it. So meanwhile, our community is still sick, our children are still sick. So we need um, we petition the help of the state to uh, give us some strength. Thank you so much. I didn't submit, I was going to submit in person my testimony. My name is Lauren Pang, I'm a physician. I am not supposed to tell you what I do for my day job, but before I took this job, I was the World Health Organization advisor for 25 plus years, directing research. Currently, I review research for the US Congress on products. I um, am a professor of medicine at the University of Brasilia. Uh, last year, I was a visiting professor and I have about six dozen publications in peer-reviewed medical journals. More importantly, I was out there in Kauai when Kauai first had their problem twice to look at their children, another time to write a report, and I am the medical advisor for the class action lawsuit on Kauai. I'm from Maui. Um, being the medical advisor, I'm privy to what people use, the chemical companies use and don't use. I'll just cut this real short, right to the chase here. I think I can contribute quite a lot of uh, scientific arguments to justify what you do and support. Maybe you can modify it a little bit. First of all, these chemicals that are used, chemicals, a lot of them are cytal. Cytal means to kill, pesticide, kill. Kill nematodes, kill fungus, kill whatever, kill. They're pharmacologically active. Now. A lot of the other chemicals are enhancing the killing. They allow penetration, persistence, etc. So these things are not, as I've been criticized, beef stew. Beef stew is a combination of gajillion chemicals, but how many chemicals of beef stew are cytal? So these things, what I have to say, particularly addresses pharmacologically active cytal chemicals, these pesticides. What's the problem? Well, there is a claim now that a lot of these single elements have not been studied well, chronically. That is kind of true. Atrazine, et cetera, et cetera. But my beef has always been with the combinations. 
in medicine, you know, Josh, as well as I, every time you combine two drugs, you start with square one because the combination might be qualitatively or quantitatively more toxic or least toxic than either single component. So, once again, we have the combinations we deal with. If you don't believe me, look at the EPA. The EPA gave testimony in Maui during the initiative. They referenced the National Academy of Science. I leave you the reference list. Uh, I give you 17 references. The National Academy of Science, everybody's scientific guru, the largest section on pesticides is mixtures. How do we deal with that? The uncertainty of toxicity. How do we even evaluate these? And the EPA says, well, we haven't really started evaluating any combination. And the National Academy of Science says, I think you should define first what is a combination. A combination is sprayed in a tank together, sprayed separately but overlap in the environment. Maybe they, the chemicals never see each other in the tank or the environment, but the pathology, the damage, continues on until it repairs while the other damage continues on. So the definition of combination by the National Academy of Science is quite extensive. So what? Why are you concerned about the combinations? How will this help with this bill? Well, I went ahead and calculated all the potential combinations depending how many single elements, chemicals you use. Remember, maybe we studied the single ones well, maybe we didn't, but let's just give it to them. They studied the single ones well, let's say. When you use four chemicals, there are, uh, I'll leave this for you, 15 combinations, okay? Now, you've studied each single one, so there's 11 that you didn't study. Okay, that's four. Who uses four? Maybe the guy spraying the weed killer along the road. Okay. When there are 15, who uses 15? Maybe the pineapple and sugar cane guys. There are 30,000 combinations, mixtures, that you really didn't study any of the mixtures, did you? And each one, like you and I know, is potentially as dangerous as a single one. When you use 30, well, who uses 30? Well, some guys do. There's 10 billion, 10 billion. When you use 45, who uses 45? Strawberries, apples, non-GMO, 10 trillion. And here is what we pulled from Kauai. They use 80 plus chemicals. The chemical companies in Hawaii, the seed companies, use a whole bunch more chemicals, amount and kinds. 80 is a trillion, trillion combinations. Now, they're not all dangerous. Some of them don't have an effect. So let's give it to them. Maybe only one out of a trillion is dangerous. But you had a trillion, trillion. Well, now you got a trillion left to deal with. But maybe that explains why guys use 30 chemicals, 10 billion, when only one out of a trillion is dangerous. Never saw a surprise. Maybe we don't have to worry about it. And this is what I wanted to address with the termite control guides, small farmers, the the gymnasium, school guys, the stuff. it's the number of kinds that you use. And of course the amount, because it overlaps or doesn't. Now if you want to cut the limit at that, not just how much you use, but how many kinds, why? Because we haven't tested any combination except maybe two or three. And this is supported by the National Academy of Science. What else could this contribute? I leave this for you, the number of combinations you really don't know what we're doing with. It sets your buffer zone. When you say, well, look, how far should we do it? Well, here is one of the chemicals, the most volatile. Are we adjusting the single chemical? Absolutely not. That represents the drift of all the 80 and all the other trillion, trillion combinations that could be. You have actually no scientific grounds to set a, a, a limit on the buffer zone without knowing the threshold effect, but you never knew the combinations. Next. The kids, you worry about the kids, the toxicity of the kids? Well, with a trillion trillion, well, let's just take one trillion for that. A trillion unknowns, I worry about myself. Sure, the kids are at higher risk. I'm going to be old someday, and in the true name of preventive medicine, why wait till I get old to say, hey, you're really messed up, you can't handle these things. It's cumulative. You should have prevented it before I get old, and I'm getting close. Now, that is the target group. I am trying to, and I've already addressed the users. I'm willing to give a break to the, well not break, but I, I don't think we have scientific strong arguments to go after the termite guys if you know the termite chemicals well. 
I don't think you have a strong argument to go after the roadside crew if you know those chemical well. And it's controversial if you know glyphosate well or not. So these are my scientific arguments to maybe support the bill or temper it a little bit. Once again, I am not against the small farmers. I myself am against, I'm a small farmer. But I don't use above 10 chemicals at once. I say above because I don't use more than one. My wife won't let me. And I am not going to be put out of business, and I agree with that. But there, this is the rationale. So I'll be happy. I'll stay around for um, questions, and I leave this with all the references for you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Peck. We do appreciate it. Just to take that and get into us. Glad to see you become so mellow in your. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, Dan for some members of the public. On a bit lighter note, uh, first I want to uh, uh, congratulate uh, uh, Scott and Ryan on his renomination to head the Department of Agriculture. Um, but I want to direct you to uh, page 16, uh, line 9, where it says the public the public annual report shall be posted online on the department's website. And I might recommend an amendment. You might suggest they be posted within 48 hours, 72 hours, 10 days, or 30 days, or something. And I'll tell you three quick reasons why the department is a bit challenged in posting things online. Under annual reports, the last annual report that was filed for them of any sort at all was in 2012. When we go to their uh, website for Board of Agriculture Actions, these are meetings, these are things that occur in their meeting where they take action. They're basically the minutes. The last minutes or any action we have from the Board of Agriculture were in 2012. And finally, uh, they were posting financial and compliance audit reports from Acuity. The last one we have is from 2009. Also, none of their agenda uh, submittals for any of their meetings are available online. So I would encourage you, uh, Chair Enright claims it's for budget problems, but we really need to get this stuff posted quickly. Much more hard. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. That individual was from Big Island. We, if she can still be caught, I think we could get her testimony. Mm -hmm. Who else did I have wanting to testify on this measure? Uh, Seven RUPs and the rest of them, uh, general use pesticides and uh, surfactants and stuff like that. <clears throat> and uh, but my my concern is illnesses. My wife got sick. She had breast cancer. My neighbor two doors down, she died. Her daughter-in-law was in chemotherapy with my wife. My neighbor across the street has leukemia. I've been coughing since February 2014. My neighbor has been coughing for six months, on and off. But uh, we, I want somebody to come down Alawai Road and go, go to every home and see how many people died of cancer, mm -hmm. how many people died of kidney disease, mm -hmm. how many people died of diabetes, because mm -hmm. we have both kidney disease and diabetes, which glyphosate eats up your kidneys and your pancreas and everything else, your microflora, your in your gut. But nobody will do the study. We started an anecdotal study. We have 125 people in the valley dead, survived. That's a lot of people. And um, nobody will listen to us. We have dead birds. We have all kinds of dead fish shells from the 55,000 sea urchin, but, you know, we don't have money to test anything. And it's just, you know, my concern that just in the valley, because the 175 is Waimea Valley only, it doesn't include Kikaha because of, of, uh, of the first phase of the lawsuit. 
which they're meeting this afternoon because there's, there's a decision or something that came through. But anyway, um, I wanted, if it was all, at all possible for somebody to send somebody to do an anecdotal study just on our street and, and see how many people actually did dying or presently sick from um, pesticide related or possible pesticide related illnesses. And that's my main concern because too, too many people, two roads down the valley, incredible, three people in the same house dead. One of our friends just died last week. Her, her sister died of cancer, her mother died of cancer. It's on and on, it, it's not ending. And we're suffering every day, every day. So last week, my asthma, my cough was really, really bad. I've been here for one week. It's improved. So that's what happened the last time I went to the main in two weeks, and my breathing improved. As soon as I go back to Kauai, my first day back, I start coughing. So there's something in the environment around my home that's not causing my asthma. So if you, if, if you do the study, you see all the kids, my neighbor's kids. My neighbor went through emergency three times, he couldn't breathe. I went two times, I couldn't breathe. It's on and on. Somebody has to study this to prove that the clusters are vast. It's incredible um, how many people are sick. And, and it's not normal. You, you can go down Princeville Road, you're not going to find anything like this at all. <laughs> they have one guy down the road who died of cancer. <laughs> not 125. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone still from Department of Health here today? We'll ask Wendell. You're from Department of Health? Yeah. So if you could take Wendell's information and then convey it to uh, the director, that would be helpful for longitudinal purposes. We're going to take a brief recess for a moment. We are at the committee hearing for the uh, Bill 793, which would establish buffer zones and disclosure for um, large users of uh, pesticides. Yeah. It should go maybe an hour after the live stream. It should be able to play back, and then I'll put it up to you. Okay. Too. <laughs> We're fairly early in the uh, legislative process. Has to clear this uh, committee and. Uh, I don't know what committee next, and then it crosses over to the other chamber of the legislature, and then, you know, it has to pass both houses, chambers, before it uh, becomes law. We have a large crowd here. This bill is very similar to the ordinance passed on Kauai that is subject to a lawsuit by the pesticide corporation. So we have um, not only people from Kauai, but people from the uh, outer islands, the neighbor islands, as well as um, State Department, Director of Agriculture, a lot of uh, advocates. There's Andrea back there. Um, a lot of uh, pesticide corporation heads, there's uh, Philipson of Syngenta, a lot of uh, biochemical lobbyists, uh, both uh, Malu Afiti, who uh, was representing uh, one of the bio uh, companies. She used to be the head of Hawaii Crop Improvement Association, which is a uh, lobbying group by the chemical companies and her job has been taken by Bennett uh, Misaluka who is sitting right there next to lobbyists from Monsanto. Um, we got 
that uh, is Phillips. And you can see it's a big room. A lot of interest in this bill. Over uh, 400 people submitted testimony overwhelmingly for the bill. I think, I think there is. And that's Carly right there, who we recognize from previous years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice seeing you here. I know. <laughs> I only see you at hearings back. and stuff. What is that? Good. I only see you at these yeah. hearings. It's good. I'm glad you're, glad you're here. Yes, yeah, you're back. Last year was a you're year back. of uh, <laughs> getting my work situated, oh. but now that I have a good steady job, I can be back. Good. <laughs> Be active, which everyone should do more of. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. Okay, so, who else do I have that wanted to testify? Please come up. We're still on uh, 793. Aloha, Chairs. Committee, I really appreciate uh, you seeing this bill. Um, introduced, my name is Fern Ormini Rosenstiel. I was born and raised on the island of Kauai. Today I represent myself, I represent my family, I represent Ohana Farms, Ohana Okoye, and the over 46,000 people that joined me in the streets twice in 2013. We passed an initiative on Kauai to give us the right to know what chemicals are being used in these fields. Uh, I have a few things that I've, I just noted that I'd like to briefly mention, but the biggest thing is thank you, because we've been really trying to get this information for over two years now. The first thing I'd like to address is uh, the regulation that they say that they they have. Um, there's massive holes in regulation, and we're not saying that there isn't regulation, we're saying that it's failed to regulate what's important. Uh, if you look up things like the substantial equivalence, uh, conditional registration exemption in the federal government of pesticides, the federal law on pesticides, and the revolving door in the political system of the federal government, uh, you can understand why there's exemptions and holes in regulation. Uh, if you look at the Kauai records, the redacted non-compliant data that comes in that shows that they've actually been non-compliant in many of the, the few regulatory checks that they've had uh, is very concerning. And the fact that that's redacted and we're not allowed to know what kind of non-compliance it is is further concerning. Uh, and as Dr. Pang mentioned, the complex mi mixtures and unknown unknowns that we may not find out for many, many years. Uh, another thing is, is farmers aren't using these, at least on Kauai from the experience that we had. 98% uh, of the restricted use pesticides that are openly sprayed into the air, which is the clarification of where they get the statistics that tell you that it's not. Because chlorine gas is used by our county, but it's used to treat water. It's not sprayed out in the air without any kind of protections. Uh, we have about 98% of the pesticides that were applied on Kauai in the research that we found uh, were applied by the Baltic Chemical Corporation uh, and one other large-scale farming operation, Koi Coffee. Uh, Two percent were all golf courses and everybody else. Um, also, they're not producing food. None of these commodities that are regulated under permits uh, issued for experimental field trials go to food production. None of this is, is for food, and it's not certainly not feeding the people of Hawaii. Um, and it's not being sold locally. These are field trials and experimental permits, so when they tell you that they follow the label, they're actually given experimental field trial permits to not follow the label, so please keep that in mind when you're considering buffer zones. The tunes have really changed in two years. Um, two, two years ago, we weren't allowed to do this because it was your guy's job. It wasn't our county's That's job right. to do this. Two years ago, we were told, how dare us, just average community citizens, come up and ask for the right to know what chemicals are being sprayed by these corporations that obviously know what they're doing. Now we're here two years later and, and there's a different tune. There's another reason not to support this bill. And so I'm asking that the state of Hawaii and the people in this room step up and help us, um, and other testimony have already asked for, help to find out what, what's being used here, the truth of where it's being applied. And, um, and the very first step, for those that are wondering about the first steps that we should be taking, uh, are disclosure. Uh, because we cannot make any decisions without adequate information. When Monsanto tells you that their health and the health of people is their priority, I encourage you to remember that in the mountains above where I was born, Monsanto, in conjunction with the University of Hawaii, tested Agent Orange in conjunction with Agent Pink, Agent White, Agent Yellow, in concoctions uh, at the research facility uh, in uh, up north of uh, where I live in the mountains. Um, and and those, those cleanup standards were left up to five times normal cleanup standards in the EPA documents. Uh, and that was done in conjunction with the University of Hawaii and was kept secret and was never told to the Kapal community at the time when that experiment happened between 1968 and 670, I believe. 
uh, 10 years after they injected it into prisoners in Pennsylvania, uh, with Dow and Monsanto injecting it into 100 different, 20 different patients in a Pennsylvania jail to find out what impacts it had uh, for the dioxins in the Agent Orange. And then they brought it to Kauai and sprayed it in the mountains above where I was born. I have just a few recommendations for this bill. Um, <coughs> section B and is actually really targeting schools and protection on schools, so I'd like to uh, suggest a much lower trigger amount, if not any trigger amount for disclosure, because I believe parents deserve the right to know any pesticides that are sprayed on their kid's school. I think that's fair, because I don't think uh, people find not it's not <coughs> um, But section C and D could have trigger values that are set to exclude any kind of small farmers, like I said on Kauai, our bill, it was triggered only large-scale users, and 98% of the pesticides being used were five companies. So we can set trigger values to ensure that no actual food producing small-scale farmers are impacted by the bill, um, and I encourage you to do so. And when you consider buffers, I'd like you to please consider winds are incredibly strong. In Kauai, we have hundreds of different lit winds that Hawaiians identified, and um, I, I encourage you to consider that the EPA looks at over 1,500 feet um, from pesticide poisoning, when they look at how, how close do you live, they ask you on the, on the questionnaire if you live within 1,500 feet of an agricultural operation. And then I ask you to consider what Dr. Pang said about combinations. But above all, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, we're crowdfunding to get people here from Kauai. Um, I've been raising money to get people um, that we can, like myself here. I've taken off the day from work. Um, I stepped up front of the county council for weeks at a time, it felt like, and I took six months off work. Uh, to, to help passing a 2491, and I'm really appreciative that every one of you is hearing this bill, and I please encourage you to pass it forward in a very strong manner. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Do I have any other testifiers today? Aloha, honorable senators. My name is Nomi Carmona, representing Babes Against Biotech. And um, in the interest of you being able to hear more than one bill today, I'm going to just kind of skip through my testimony and email you the particular um, studies that I've referenced to build it. So this is the most basic of regulations that we could possibly ask for, pesticide buffer zones around our, our schools and children. And um, on behalf of our 15,000 Hawaii members and 39,000 supporters, we are in strong support of SB 793. Um, these pesticide uh, protections are incredibly modest, and in our opinion, it'd be inexcusable not to prevent the exposure of children to pesticides. In light of the overwhelming scientific evidence showing harm to our kiki from pesticide exposure, that's not up for debate right now. We know that pesticides are harmful to children. So um, they can be applied to, uh, sorry, they can be exposed to pesticides applied on school grounds, which are linked to developmental display, uh, delays in children, and toxic exposure um, is also linked to critical development problems and processes um, that are disrupted by pesticide exposure, both to the uh, mother and the father. Um, in occupational exposure as well, I might add that children under the age of six have a six times higher chance of contracting brain cancer before the age of six if their parents sprays pesticides. So think about the direct contact to our children at schools with actual pesticides um, in the air. So without the disclosure notification aspects of this bill, we can't really measure the impacts of the agrochemical pesticides in large quantities. And I think we all know that, but um, once again, there's not really a debate about childhood exposure. That's pretty clear. I love when the pesticide manufacturers and the lobbyists say that they're highly regulated by the EPA because I don't have to pass a bill to disprove that. The fact of the matter is, as we found out um, in Maui County as well, we actually had the EPA on the line and they admitted that they don't test any of the combinations that are being used, I mean, these multiple pesticides that we're being exposed to. Not only that, so people were so shocked by the fact they don't test what's going on out here. They're not closely monitoring what's happening in Hawaii. So if we're counting on the EPA to provide protection for our children from pesticide exposure, then we could say goodbye to that. But what's even more shocking to me and incredibly stunning is the fact that the EPA does not do any safety testing on pesticides. They do not do any of their own environmental or health safety testing on pesticides. Instead, the pesticide manufacturers submit their own studies, and the EPA says, ah, this looks good, we'll go ahead and register it. It's not called approval, it's called registration. So I think that alone warrants the fact that we need, uh, we need to look at this more closely. We need the disclosure, we need the notification, we need the buffer zones. And I don't really want to hear again that the EPA regulates pesticide use in Hawaii because I know for a fact they don't actually even do any tests themselves. 
It's like a fox guarding a hen house. Can we please put the children's health before the word of the pesticide manufacturers who profit off of the use of pesticides? I mean, I would think that would be a really simple equation, and I hope that that translates um, to your governing body and the governing bodies that will see this measure after you. So I'm going to wrap it up right there and ask you to please support SB 793 and make the children the priority and not the pesticide manufacturers. Thank you. Thank you very much. So members, we... Uh, can, I, can I say one thing? Yeah. <coughs> uh, I'm not going to say anything, but I will. Um, my name is Andrea DeCosta. I'm from the windward side of Oahu. And I am testifying in support of this um, bill. I think it's really important for us to have some at least safe measures in place. And the reason why I think it's important is because the state of Hawaii and the Army Corps of Engineers has actually known since the 1940s how lethal these products are. And the reason why we know that they know this is because there is a book that was published in 1982 called Kaneohe uh, History of Change by Dennis Devaney um, with the former um, Marion Ross, who, um, bless her heart, has passed now. Um, but she worked in conjunction with um, Dennis Devaney and the Army Corps of Engineers, and they conducted tests using these pesticides in the very early uh, stages. So just using very nominal types of pesticides, um, the anecdotally in the book, um, and this is based on data from the 1940s, anecdotally in the book it says, kills all forms of life within 15 minutes. Well, if it kills all forms of life within 15 minutes, then we have to imagine what it's doing to the rest of us. And the reason why I actually got here and up here and spoke today is because I'm really concerned about the fact that we're not concerned about future generations and we're not concerned about the health of Hawaii. So in the same way that we're now coming to terms with the fact that we know that housing is, is health care, we also need to come to terms with the fact that some of these other things are part of our health care regime as well. And, and I'll, I'll give, you this, give you this example. In the community that I grew up in, we also have a disproportionate amount of, of cancers and diseases that, that, that we, nobody can explain. It's inexplicable. We have a lot of people who are, who are um, being diagnosed with cancers before the age of 30. I just don't understand how that could be. Um, and the only thing that I can guess is that it has some relationship to the pesticide use that had been in place prior to, the, to all of the housing projects that were developed in Kanehoi or on the windward side. So I think we really need to look at that. The other thing I think we need to look at is you need to look at the medical data. In addition to some of the um, statistics that have been shared with, with these fine people today, um, there's other data that needs to be addressed. And that data is what the cost of the healthcare associated with um, the diseases that people are um, experiencing as a result of their exposure. And I'll give you an example. Um, one of the largest healthcare companies in Hawaii actually has um, claims related data that indicates that just for one diagnosis code, just one diagnosis code, okay? Um, and there's a, there's a ton of diagnosis codes out there. One diagnosis code over a three year period, um, which, which is basically a kidney disease, a blood disease, um, one diagnosis code, code paid the highest. It was like, 730 or 40 million dollars for just one diagnosis code out of all the diagnosis codes. So I, I guess I'm curious, why why are we dying and why are, why are we spending this much money on something like renal disease? What's what's going on? So we have to look at some of these other factors. And since we know that pesticide exposure is harmful um, and and lethal, I think that we need to look at um, at least creating these buffer zones and starting with some base of, of safety around our children. So thank you. We're going to take. Um, Can I actually pause for, for a second, please? So um, this there's, this gentleman will certainly say yes, but has anyone else does anyone else feel they haven't been able to testify today on these measures? Please come forward. Hello, Mike Akko. My name is Gil Medeiros. Um, I come here today, it's kind of interesting, kind of coming about this. Um, a few years back, I, I'm from, I, I just moved here from Maui. But on Maui, ended up, uh, we got, I got involved with this Occupy Wall Street movement. And it ended up putting focus on top of these companies. And with these companies, we came in front of these companies, and I remember at one point there was only like 20 of us. And everybody thought it was crazy. And everybody thought that, you know, what the hell are these guys doing out here? And then I look forward to now, and it's like, oh, the tide is rising. You know, so I fully support SB 793. And to me, it's just kind of interesting because we've heard these people, you know. I remember saying, 
you know, back in the day when it says somebody who has cancer, it's like somebody so and so, so and so, so and so, so and so's uncle who has cancer. Today, every single one of us in this room, I'm pretty, pretty sure, knows somebody firsthand that has cancer. You know, so for myself, as a registered nurse, basically I, I was working in the ER on Mountain Memorial, now I've transferred to Queens. And I come here today, and I live right down the street now, and I'm going to be here every single time we have to do this. But I'm tired. I'm tired of coming here in front of you guys. I'm tired of going in front of all these groups that have supposedly the interests of the people, but yet we're still here. I was part of that Maui miracle that we talked about, how we was able to overturn this big millions and millions put down to, to overturn our decision that was pushing for regulation. And we won. And we won. But yet I'm looking at all of you over here. Something as clear as that that had happened on Maui. Clearly this corporation came in and dropped millions. Millions. But yet we're still here fighting. I don't get it. So please do your job. So I can take my ass back to the hospital and do mine. Because I'm tired. And once again, three in the afternoon. Look at these faces. These are the regular faces that are always here. Corporate interests, regular people. And it just doesn't make sense to me because I'm tired. Nobody can come at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and give this darn testimony to you guys. All the brothers I know is at work. We all worked in trying to run this rat race. But at the end of the day, I as a nurse, as a registered nurse, has to come here constantly saying, hey, can you guys please put in some kind of rules to protect the future of our Kikioka Aina? Can you take care of the Aina that's going to take care of us? Because we're on an island, small little island in the middle Pacific. And for all these farmers that we're talking about, Last time I checked, 80% of our food is getting shipped in. Farmers. So the only argument I want to hear from farmers is, freaking grow more food for the locals. And for you guys, where was the red flag when our food was at 50%? We should be growing more of our food for ourselves. But yet, once again, I'm confused. Because my specialty is nursing. But yet, when I look at all this bureaucratic BS and whatever the hell we're dealing with, it ain't working. So please, please, please. I strongly support this bill, and please, guys, do your job. Aloha. Hey. Okay, so um, we're going to wrap testimony on these three measures, unless anyone feels they haven't adequately been heard. Okay, members, uh, why don't we go into questions and discussion. Um, we'd I'd like to start by uh, having Gary Hooser come up. We'll ask people, and my apologies to be succinct, because we do have a great number of bills still to hear, although probably significantly less testimony left. Um, the question I guess I would have for you, Councilman, is um, can you explain, I guess, the impact of, of the buffer zone on small farmers and disclosure on small farmers? That has been resonating as a concern. Um, it was brought up by one of my colleagues. Yes, I'd be happy to. Uh, on Kauai, well, we, we went through these hearings for about a year or more. And, and I learned a whole lot, and I, I emailed everyone, every member of the, of the committee, of all the committees, a document which has hyperlinks to the source documents that I'm about to reference. Uh, so that everything I'm going to say is backed up by source documents. Um, and this is based on the raw Kauai data provided by the Hawaii Department of Agriculture. It shows three, use, three years of restricted use pesticide purchases. So that data shows everybody that purchased restricted use pesticides in Kauai County over three years. And that shows that no other real Hawaii farmer on Kauai, in Kauai County, uses these restricted use pesticides to any degree whatsoever. In three years, there might have been one or two farmers that used a little bit uh, during that period. So is your answer, um, Councilman, that there would be no impact on small farmers from a bill like this? No impact whatsoever. And if I could add real quick, I know we're running out of time, but there, there was uh, three other things that I just wanted to add real quickly and then I'm done. In the same document, the same source documents, uh, it's often said the state and county also uses large amounts of pesticides. And the truth is that the state and county use uh, Roundup uh, on roadside spraying is primarily what they use. The state uses very small amounts in natural resource protection, very small amounts. Kauai County uses chlorine gas, which is technically a pesticide. Use pesticides. So it's, it's a contained, it's not spraying the open fields. And golf courses, this is an interesting thing. People say, well, what about golf courses? They use a lot of pesticides, too. The same data shows that on Kauai, all our golf courses combined, we have about five different golf courses, shows 
they use combined about 50 pounds and 20 gallons of restricted pesticide. 50 gallons, and that's not good, granted. But you compare it to the five companies who use 5,477 pounds and 4,324 gallons during the same time period. So yes, other people use restricted use pesticides, but the front, by and large, the most are used by the large agro, agro businesses and, and other large agribusinesses in general. Thank you. Mr. Manfredi? What was, what, what was the period, of, what was the interval of time, Councilman? How many years? It's a three-year period. Which, for those numbers, for those? For the 5,477 pounds, was that a one-year period? That's an annual thing, that's an annual thing. Yeah, but taken off a three-year report. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was uh, one of those three years or annualized over those three years. But the data, again, the hard copy data from the Hawaii Department of Agriculture is available via the link, exact data that I made the calculations on. Did you have a question also? Yes. Thank you, Chair. I think he spoke about Kauai's experience. Is there statewide data similar to what you provided, Oahu, Maui County, and Big Island County? Um, I, I'm sure there is data like that. Uh, when I requested it for Kauai County, uh, as a council member, I had to pay $400 to get it, and I had to wait six weeks to get it. Uh, since that time period, I requested uh, updated data from the Department of Agriculture, and I'm unable to get it uh, broken down by company. So they were at one time available, but now it's not available. I'm sure to the chair of the Agricultural Committee and, and these various committees that information would be available to you. Thank you. I guess for Scott and Wright, do you have a similar? Um, have you been able to obtain the information, like uh, Councilmember Hoosier, for the other counties as well as Kauai? And to be clear, this is sales data. It's not use data. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me, Senator. I didn't catch the question. The question again. Councilmember Fraser had shared with us the amount of um, pesticides that are used, I guess, restricted use, um, compared to um, for Kauai County. And that's, a, to me, a very significant amount um, that he had described, 5,477. So the data that I depending on the county. So in the document I sent you, there's a link to the report I got from the Department of Agriculture showing three years of data that track the purchases of restricted use pesticides in Kauai County. And so that's where this data comes from. So it includes everybody, it includes the county, it includes golf courses, it includes anyone who buys restricted use pesticides only. There there is no information whatsoever on the use or purchase of glyphosate or generally used pesticides. So, I mean, that's pretty astounding, I think. Uh, but so mine only reflects restricted use pesticides. Mm -hmm. So for Oahu, for example, where there may be a, the residential population is higher, I, I'm just wondering if we should be focusing on not only the large farmers, but also the households depending on the counties. Uh, so I need to understand if you have any numbers in terms of who purchases restricted yes. pesticides. Yes, Senator, we have the numbers on restricted use pesticide. On the general use pesticide, we don't track those, but Tom Matsuda, the branch manager from the department's pesticide branch, is here. Tom, can you answer that question? Sure, yeah, REP's sales records for that period, 2010, 
11, 12 was provided to the council member who's here. So we have breakdown statewide. Uh, for him, it was just Highland uh, Kauai County only. Uh, his secondary request for additional information uh, and why it's not being provided, it takes a lot of man hours to go through uh, the records. And we had uh, talked to our legal counsel about that. And we could only provide certain types of information. Is it because the company, I would not think we have a lot of companies that sell this product. Oh, so the dealers you're talking about. Let's are we getting sell. pesticides from the internet? Or other no, things? Okay. Or, so it's purchased here, correct? Purchased here, correct. So I don't think there is that many companies selling this product. So why wouldn't we be able to identify their overall sales and the, the subset of okay. restricted pesticides? I'm asking Mr. Masuda. Yeah. So I don't acquire, there's only two dealers. So if you're in business mm -hmm. and you post your sales and I'm the other guy, and I minus my sales from you, guess what? I know how you're doing. So this is kind of the protected uh, information. We were looking at just so posting. Department of Ag doesn't, Department of Agriculture doesn't provide that, um, I guess, kind of oversight over the sales at all. When you say oversight, we receive sell, sales records from all the dealers. Okay. Statewide. Statewide. Mm -hmm. We would be able to just post that statewide total. That's not a problem. Let me interrupt. Okay. But there's not county data. Where mm -hmm. at least, because it seems like depending on the combination, I am just wondering if the focus of the bill needs to be broadened or not. And I don't have enough information to say. And I'm going to actually interrupt here. Okay. First, a couple questions, a couple of clarifications. I just want to make sure residential users can't use restricted use pesticides. Is that correct? correct. Okay, so I don't want that's us to get off track. This is about restricted use pesticides, and that's what this bill is about. Okay, um, we will be taking up those other pesticide questions, but the purpose of these measures is on restricted use pesticides and that broad discussion, which is what all the research and all of the requests for testimony has been about today. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, other questions? Yes. <coughs> so for the Department of Agriculture, um, the figures that Councilman Hoosier gave was that over the past three years, there was in, by the five seed companies total on the island of Kauai, an annualized amount of restricted use pesticides were used 5,477 pounds and 4,324 gallons. Is that roughly your figures? Is that an accurate amount? Okay, for that period, according to my records, the average use 9.89 tons of active ingredient. Now you have to understand, uh, pesticides are sold either dry weight or gallon. A, a volume gallon, a lot of people think it's eight pounds. That's not the case. Product like cologne, it may weigh 10 pounds. Others, the active, and again, the active is the side that does the killing. Okay, so, so, that's, okay. so you have about 9.89 tons, tons over the three, three year, year period okay. of active ingredient. Okay, and that's between the five? No, there's, there's uh, four seed and one uh, okay. coffee. Um, Four seed and one coffee, okay. Um, when you take a look at all other users of restricted use pesticides combined on the island of Kauai, what's the amount of active ingredient by weight over that same three year period? Combined, I will say that with the threshold that they set, those were the largest users. I can't give you a percentage no, I'm not asking for a percentage. Yeah. You're saying that 9.89 tons were used by the four seed companies and the coffee farm Correct. over that three-year period. Are there other users of restricted use pesticides on the island of Kauai? Yes. The okay. Of course. What was the total? I, that weight? I don't have. Okay. Because I just I just want to yeah. know like how far apart are they? For the island of Oahu, where the seed companies are also operating, over that three-year period. What was the weight 
of the active ingredient used? Uh, I don't have that information in front of me, but we can get that for you. Is it safe to say, though, in follow-up to um, the good coach's question, that the big agricultural companies are using gigantic amounts of restricted use pesticides and the other users are barely using any in comparison? Is that a fair I, statement? No. I said that they're using a lot more, but not gigantic. Well, you didn't bring the numbers, sir. You didn't have the numbers. Did you yeah. prepare for this hearing or not? Not you did statewide. You should have those numbers here if you're going to be a good representative of the state. Right. If you're going to challenge my word of gigantic, bring the numbers next time right. for your job. We'll do that. Thank you. Because in, in the follow-up, what I'd be interested in knowing is uh, to be able to compare the proportion of restricted use pesticide on the island of Kauai but also on the island of Oahu, because I know we do have some larger farming operations here on Oahu. And so if you can get that to the chairs, um, by tomorrow. then to distribute it, that would be very okay. helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Oh, yeah, I have a question for the Director of Agriculture, please. So I was reading your testimony, I noticed you mentioned that our bill does not demonstrate the connection between our, our threshold criteria. You go on to say that a low volume purchaser of restricted use pesticides might actually cause an equal amount of harm through less careful application. Right? Are you suggesting that we should include much lower volumes as a threshold, or are you saying that any threshold is unworkable? You know, uh, what I would first point out, which is what I pointed out in my brief and to Jeffrey remarks, is that with everything that we do, terms of regulating pesticide, be science-based. The, the data that we have at the Hawaii Department of Agriculture in terms of abuses of restricted use pesticides show us that it's our smaller agriculturalists that are more prone to abuse than the companies that have been targeted. Because, you know, we can see quite obviously from the testimony that's been given, this is a, one segment of agriculture. It's, it's the biotechnology companies that have been targeted. And we don't see. We don't have the data, chair, to, to show that they're the problem in applying pesticides. We well, just this, this bill also data. addresses uh, use by schools and, and institutions yeah. like that. I mean, I've heard many times that it's targeting a certain group of, of farmers and nobody else. The bill includes other people who use these same pesticides. I find it hard to understand how you think we're targeting farmers when it seems that the bill is targeting users, large users of restricted use pesticides. Period. Not small users, not users of any pesticides. Large users of restricted use pesticides. We're targeting those users of the pesticide, not farmers, right? Um, that would be correct. Okay, so so in terms of the science-based aspect, do you do you? Agree that there's any risk whatsoever with the large-scale use of pesticides? You know, it, it depends on the application. And, you know, if the application is according to label, everything that the department knows. Now, you know, the Hawaii Department of Agriculture, along with all 50 states, relies on our federal partners to, tech, to you know, ch test the technology, be it biotechnology or be it pesticides. And so what we know is that if you use the product according to the label, it's safe. Is there no risk whatsoever? There's always risk. Okay. And there's risk in the human condition. So let's look at a science-based approach to risk. We have risk. We don't know exactly where it comes into play, at what threshold, and at what distances. Is the appropriate response to an unknown level of risk zero regulation? Good question. Uh, no. Okay. Would be the short answer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, quick follow-up, and then I'm going to move right in here. Just um, how many regulators do you have, Director, on Kauai? Or One. Okay, so that was correct. I just wanted to check. No, that's, that's correct. And Maui? Maui, two. two. One. 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 Is that sufficient? We are in the stages of hiring the second inspector on Kauai. So you'll have three to cover those two islands after the hiring. To the hiring, correct. But we also have inspectors on Oahu. If there's a need, we will fly the inspectors from Oahu uh, to Kauai if there's some kind of incident that requires that. Uh, my observation is that's not a lot of 
manpower to check a lot of major farming activity. That's correct. But we, we are relying on the training for the certified applicators. We hold them to a higher standard. But we hold them to a higher standard, but without anybody to hold them. That's the problem. There's no one to... True. We, but we have all different type of inspections, not only with the farmers of the uh, seed companies. We have the regular vegetable farmers, cattle growers. We have the pest control operators. We respond to complaints. We also check with the stores that sell pesticide products to be sure that it is properly licensed. But you only have these very small number of people. Exactly. And that's, yeah. Which is a, that's a large crux of the problem. Sure. Yeah, a couple of questions. Uh, I can't end I'm sorry, but um, is it true that some of the restricted use pesticides that are being used here in Hawaii by the large agri agribusiness companies are banned in other countries? Yes. Okay. Could I have the representative from Syngenta come forward, please? Martin Phillipson, is that correct? That's correct. The que uh, maybe it's more of an observation, but my understanding is that atrazine is banned in the European Union and in Switzerland, and I understand that Syngenta is based in Switzerland. Is that correct? That, that's correct. And so, um, as the maker of atrazine, uh, Syngenta and other companies that are using large quantities of atrazine here in Hawaii, but you are not allowed to use that in Switzerland. Is that correct? Yeah. Atrazine is a product that uh, was discovered in the 50s and uh, was discovered by an American company at that time and was acquired by Syngenta, which is a Swiss-based company today. Uh, Syngenta is a company that was uh, founded in 2001. And back to DOA. Uh, my understanding is that the Paraquat is used by Kauai Coffee and mainly other large ag operations, and that that's banned in over 36 countries. Is that correct or incorrect? I'm not sure about the number of countries banned in, but it is used locally. It's a restricted use pesticide, it's an herbicide. Thank you. Just to follow up, I never quite heard the answer. Is, is atrazine banned in Switzerland? Yes. Thank you. It's, uh, it's actually... I just never heard the answer to, to, to send this question. And it's actually a well studied. There's about 7,000 studies on atrazine. Oh, Are you saying that it's safe? I'm saying that there's 7,000 studies. Okay, so why not Switzerland then? I mean, I think you're defending atrazine here, right? So let me just have you elaborate. Why do you think Switzerland bans it? It's, uh, it's uh, in my feeling, it's a political ban. Okay, thank you. Not a scientific sure. one. Thanks. Um, Tom, I have a question for you, and that is, um, when we read the labels, because that's often said, you know, the label is the law. When we read the labels for a specific product, do they ever recommend setbacks? Some labels may refer to setbacks, do not apply their waterways to 25 feet distance. Uh, some may, uh, I think if you use it in a nursery, depends on the type of application. They may have a buffer zone, maybe a hundred feet. But this would be kind of on the how, how do they come up with those? How do they come scientific. up with scientific? Again, the, the label, certain products. Most of the products will not have a number. What they will have is a statement that says avoid drift or do not apply this product in a way that will contact a worker or anyone else. So some of these um, since the focus is on RUPs, um, there are RUPs that um, are identified as you need to set back a certain distances. Not, uh, not that I'm Or that there are, okay. Yes. But that whole label takes into consideration the product, how it's so used. Based on the product, there are recommended setbacks for certain reasons. And also, yeah. And the wind drift, okay, okay. we heard earlier today that the you know, dust. Is, does the Department of Agriculture, do we consider that, or the Department of Health, do we consider um, dust uh, as part of a, a drifting a nuisance or uh, indeed a problem? For we do not regulate dust or should, vapors. Should we? Well, that, the dust would be the Department of Health. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, there was a, um, if I may, a couple more. Um, there was an incident in November in Wailua 
Um, there's a small, there's a little co-op of small farmers, and um, they live right behind some folks on, on Kluge Street. And we got a big waft of something nauseous. So uh, hazmat came out and everything else, and it was found out that there was a, an um, RUP applied by a, um, uh, a migrant farmer. And um, I, I'm just, uh, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is here's, here's a guy who was not authorized to be using the RUP, a Thionix or something like that. And it was a windy day and it blew into these guys' house. So he's, he's doubly violating the laws. How do we go back and, and, and go after that? And what, what's the procedure for trying to you know, get somebody who clearly violates the law like that? On that case, my inspector went out. Uh, what the hazmat found was an empty container of Thanex that was there. We could not find an applicator to link to any pesticide. And I think some of the people out there said it smelled more like malathion. So again, find, just finding this Thanex container, it was surmised that, oh, this was... Oh, it wasn't measured. Yeah, uh, well, this was what was being used. So we could not find an applicator. Do you take samples of, of the, uh, the, the crops or anything in the vicinity? Do you, do you swab or...? By the time we got out there, it was fairly... Uh, the time, there was no odor to be detected. Okay, thanks. And the last question then on, on drift. Um, there's certain rules on the label. I imagine that, that, that it has not more than five miles an hour wind or not more than ten. Certain do, do products, have those in there? Certain products uh, will say do not apply if the wind speed exceeds 14 miles an hour. Again, if you see the language that says avoid drift, and again, I'll have to get back to the EPA registration of the product. They spent like five to ten years looking at all the data. And the data, yes, it does come in from the, the uh, registrar. However, it is EPA that sets how and what you report. It's not, I'm just feeding you this and you're just going to take that. So I, I want to clarify that. So final question, Chair, please. Um, so the, the concern really is people don't want this stuff drifting under their house. I don't want it. <laughs> you don't want it. You, I don't know anybody that wants it. That's drift coming in. How can we assure the public? How can we beef up? Our Department of Agriculture or inspectors, or what can we do to help meet that? Because I think that might cut straight to the crux of the main thing here. is if you, the residents, you detect an odor and you suspect it's a pesticide, call us. A lot of times the hazmat responds first. Uh, we get another call. We are working with the Department of Education for them to also let us know when it happens so we can get out there right away and do our investigation. And this is for statewide. The other thing is school IPM. We are working with DOE, and they hired a consultant to do school IPM. For the last four years, I have been working with DOE facilities uh, and offered training to the school administrators, head custodians, cafeteria managers. They apply pesticides. We will do pesticide training label comprehension and, and safety and this was we've offered this statewide and I've got three enforcement uh, staff to do that. Wouldn't you say though it's too late once the drift of pesticides already come through our community mm -hmm. for people just to make the call? Mm -hmm. No. Pesticides already gone through their house? Mm -hmm. uh, we can come and take swab samples to detect. To find out what it was. Yes. But or now that samples. family, that child, what was your name, Chelsea? Yes. She's got a child that's got autism. She's living out in Kauai. She's got pesticide drift. Sure, she can call and tell you and have your one inspector and whatever other support, you know, get involved, but her family has now been exposed to the pesticide drift. I would call that too late. I have a question over there. Um, um, by Chair. Thanks, Chair. I wanted to kind of explore a different element of, of this measure. Um, my questions are for you, Scott. The buffer zones have flag distances on them and with whatever the, the figure may be at a later time, we're potentially rendering a lot of productive land as fallow. And by doing that, are we opening up the state to potential lawsuits from people who now, or companies or farmers who can now not be productive with whatever the distance is and then have them turn around and sue the state for the loss of revenues from that land that we almost kind of condemned? Uh, yes, would be the short answer, Vice Chair. Potentially, 
that is the case. And on another element about um, the, the students in the schools um, uh, being, being uh, protected here, is there any way that we can tailor the restrictions of, of uh, pesticides to certain hours of the day? So if the students are there from 8 till 3, then we tell the farmers that if you're going to be spraying, you do it after hours uh, when there aren't kids that are going to be prone or subjected to these pesticides. I would uh, think yes, that's something we could definitely try to work with by the And I noticed in your testimony, you're going to do some type of fact-finding project on Kauai. Can you tell us what you're searching for with that uh, project? The joint fact-finding that was started this January in conjunction with the Mayor's Office on Kauai and the Hawaii Department of Agriculture put together a, a team to take a look at all the concerns that were brought out in the course of the testimony for 2491, uh, the bill that went through the county government and was overturned by Judge Kern. To the extent that the community has concerns, whether it's public health concerns or it's concerns about the pesticide applications on the island, the Hawaii Department of Agriculture wants to know if, if their reality is, if there's anything going on. So put together a team that's run by Peter Adler, who's, who's done this work before. He has um, retained Bruce Anderson, who was once the head of the Department of Health here in the state of Hawaii and is an epidemiologist. So he'll be looking at the concerns. The concerns that were expressed by Wendell earlier, and I've spoken with Wendell on the west side of Kauai. You know, we need to find out if, if that's in fact the case. If, but you know, again, it's, it's scientific inquiry. We need to go in and substantiate what's going on with pesticide usage on the west side of Kauai and around the state, because it's a model for the rest of the state, and, and substantiate or find out that it's not the case. There's some other factors that are contributing to it. And so in the course of this next year, we're going to address all of the concerns that came out in the course of 2491. That's the work that we're doing. I think Wendell, the researcher, provides a very compelling testimony about how you, you put all these various chemicals together to make some kind of pesticide cocktail out of all of it, and then all of a sudden, the the research numbers could shift. So in your research on Kauai, are you looking at not just a singular use of these pesticides, but then as a, for lack of a better term, a pesticide cocktail and what those effects would be on the neighboring communities? That is one of the things that will be looked at. In the end, we'll also find out if we need to do further research. You know, when I first went to Kauai um, with, with the governor and sat in a room, what I was told is that there were cancer clusters on the west side of Kauai. So the state has done a study on, on cancer on Kauai and we found out every type of cancer, consistent with, with national and state trends, is in decline, except for melanoma. You know, it was stated in that meeting that the runoff, that the pesticide usage was so heavy on the west side, it was running off into the waterways and going down and killing off sea life. So the Department of Agriculture funded a study by the state's Department of Health, Environmental Health, to take a look at water quality statewide, which is how we found out Manoa was far worse than any place else in the state for pesticide runoffs. But there was nothing that was above tolerance levels on Hawaii. Everything was significantly less. And currently there's a study that should be coming out shortly from the Department on Health uh, on birth defects, which was uh, another um, claim that potentially pesticide usage on Kauai was producing birth defects. So, you know, much as the question about dust, you know, we don't, at the Department of Agriculture, regulate dust. But if it's coming off of agricultural lands, the Department of Agriculture is concerned, and that's why we're taking a look on the west side of Kauai and every place. And we'll take a look and we'll see what's in the dust. We'll do that testing. Um, but we're trying to be proactive at this point and, and see if we can follow up on the concerns of the public. Thank you, Director. I have one final question over here, if I might, from the Chair. Yeah, for Dewey. Uh, thank you. Are there any laws requiring companies to disclose the chemicals that they're using 
for example, if I'm a homeowner and I'm living adjacent to the fields that are being sprayed, that I may suspect I'm being exposed to drift. Um, I think no is the short answer, but I'll defer to right. Only if we are responding to a complaint, we would ask them to reveal what is uh, was used. And also the other part, if there's exposure in the school or to a, a family, we respond. We will give that information to the treating physician. And the follow-up is, uh, are there any laws that prevent the application of RDPs on fields directly adjacent to schools, hospitals, or homes? No, there are no laws. Not that I Uh, one more question for Farm Agriculture. Uh, Scott, yes, I, I, I hear you, you say that you've uh, tested and found you know, no, no seemingly dangerous levels of pesticides in places like West Kauai and places where we've seen so much concern. You've heard, um, you've seen three counties pass laws on this subject. You've heard a list of 400 members of the public coming forward with extreme concerns. We've heard some of the stories. I hear you saying that there's really no problem and we shouldn't put any controls into place. What do you make of this public concern? Is it mass hysteria? What do you think is going on here? Um, I, I don't know that I would characterize any of my, my comments or thoughts in saying that we don't need to, to regulate. And having a conversation about pesticide use in the state is useful. So I, wel I welcome the opportunity. But if you look at the advent of, of this conversation. It, it started with an attempt to ban GMOs. It was against the, the biotech companies. And the pesticide usage became a wedge issue. And you know, in two of the counties, they were anti-biotech prohibitions. And on Kauai, it started out as an anti-biotech prohibition and morphed into a pesticide regulation bill. Okay, so so, so, that's, so it, Sorry, Chair. Yes. No, please. Well, so, I mean, okay, so GMO is, is a related issue, and it, it, but we've heard so many stories of people concerned about their neighbors being sick, the gentleman from Kauai, you know, uh, do you think this is really all a ruse, you know, this is, this is a, sort of a farce? to be a proxy for the GMO fight, or do you think there's real concerns about pesticide use in our communities? You know, certainly there, there's concerns. You know, I was just giving you the, the advent of it. Um, I'm familiar with that, so by the way. Thank you. So, the question again? Uh, well, what do you make of all this concern over, over there, there's this clamoring, both at, at both county government level and at the public level, for some increased controls over pesticide use near schools, residences, and large quantities of the of restricted use pesticides. What do you make of it all in the face of your statement that that, that these regulations we're proposing are necessary or appropriate? Yeah, and again, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have the conversation and, and look at regulations. I was just saying they should be driven by science. And so, and in, in the same way that this chair um, with the Department of Agriculture has started to join fact-finding on Kauai and is going to do it elsewhere. I take seriously the concerns <coughs> of the public. And to the extent that there is a problem with pesticide usage any place in the state, the Hawaii Department of Agriculture wants to know about it so that we can react. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. I'm just going to wrap up this statement and then we'll come to some votes. Um, I take it to heart. I mean, I, I have a great deal of respect for you, you know, and, it, and I genuinely appreciate your, your directness and candor, but when you say you, you take it seriously, and I know you take it seriously, but then when I we sit across the table and you tell me you have one individual for Kauai and one individual for Maui to police, to regulate the issue, and I sit next to a former head of DLNR who's now a senator, and she reminds me that we passed you know, and promoted additional positions, not to mention, of course, you as leaders of the department. Looking at this gigantic outcry, again, I use that word because it is big, okay? I, I don't understand if we say we're taking it seriously. Those are, those are words, but the actions, when you have multiple families 
that needs some response, and we have multiple chem uh, chemical companies and multiple other users that we have to follow up with. Even if we decide and determine ultimately that there's no significant or serious threat, do we not demonstrate a more serious concern with a lot more manpower and focus? And that is the question I have for you. It does not appear to me that the problem and the concern, because concern in society is a major part of what we do, because we need to reassure people. We need to study. I'm not trying to open up a can of worms with the precautionary principle, but I'm saying from a psychological standpoint, when many thousands of members, in fact, we're over 100,000 members that have reached out as a part of this dialogue, don't feel safe or satisfied, do we not owe them more attention and regulation, even if it ultimately proves safe? We spend a lot more money and time on issues that have affect far fewer people. So what is the department prepared to do to address that concern? We are, in fact, filling our, our, our positions that are open share. The, the challenge for the Hawaii Department of Agriculture is, in the last economic downturn, we lost 40% of our staffing. 40% of one? Oh. Of the entire department. <laughs> okay. Because 40% so of one we, is what we, we got now. Yeah, we, have, um, we have 110 open positions that we're trying to fill. And so we need to give each of the, the different aspects of work that we do in the department. Um, equal weight. So I work on it. I worked on it twice already this week. We are filling the positions, but we also have to fill our plant quarantine inspector positions and others. So we're quickly moving on it. We appreciate that. Additional yeah. uh, inspectors on both Maui and Kauai. Okay. We'll take a brief recess. We're going to come to a vote on these measures and then proceed. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. We are in recess. Hope to come to a vote on this bill. Uh, perhaps in a few more minutes. And we've been hearing a testimony on Senate Bill 793, which requires a large pesticide users, so restricted use pesticides to disclose um, use and to observe buffer zones uh, by schools and residences, I believe. And it has drawn a lot of uh, public attention. It's a hot issue. It's a law. It's a, it, the bill is very similar to an ordinance passed on Kauai. I believe that was uh, Bill 2491 of a couple years ago that was passed and was challenged in court by the chemical corporations. A, uh, I believe the case is still ongoing, but the, at this point, the, uh, the judge, Judge Curran, ruled that uh, this sort of thing is what the states should do. So that kind of brings us to this bill. There are a lot of people here, advocates uh, from the community, the uh, director of the Department of Agriculture, a lot of the state guys, uh, a lot of people, a contingent from uh, Kauai, activists from Kauai. Um, <laughs> um, so we're waiting for um, some a little break, and then we'll there'll be discussion and hopefully some kind of uh, vote on it. Hey, hey! <laughs> I see you. Thanks for your testimony. You have anything to say, no? Um, I thought that was really telling when um, we get a little further. Away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's when uh, the Syngenta representative, whose name is Mark Philipson, Mark, and was formerly one of the heads of Hawaii Crop Improvement Association, that's right. they just rotate executives yeah, of chemical do. companies yeah. as the head. <laughs> um, and we were asking about atrazine, and he said, "We have seven thousand studies." And the senators went, "Wait, are, are you telling me that atrazine is safe?" And he's like, "I'm telling you, we have seven." <laughs> I think I think some might be by Tyrone Hayes. Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, about like changing the sex of frogs. Right. Atrazine versus your testosterone. That's uh, Nomi of uh, Babes Against Biotech. And we also have uh, Alicia Malofiti, who is the uh, head of um, a lobbyist for um, Hoi Crop Improvement Association last year. So now representing another. Hey! <laughs> We're on a little break. We're waiting. Uh, and I th- and, uh, and the senators, actually, I don't know if they're going to take a vote or there are a number of other bills that they're going to go forward and take testimony in these other bills and then come back and do a decision making. Or, or no. oh, here we're back. Recommendation on Senate Bill 793 is to pass with technical amendments. Members, um, uh, well, opens for discussion in a moment. We've had excellent input from many people today. Uh, in addition, and this will apply for this bill and for the next, um, we would like to uh, add in the committee report the following. A um, watershed definition needs to be uh, improved and enhanced in the measure. We'll work with our chair of water land on that definition going forward. Disclosure is felt to be most important in many ways in these bills. We also want to include that we have a concern that disclosure of combinations of chemicals be emphasized going forward. So I want to keep things basically clean in this large debate. This is the first hearing, and it's going to require a lot more input. Uh, We will, of course, need to uh, vet and get recommendations on the specific distances and amounts if this bill is going to become law. There are recommendations contained in multiple pieces of testimony, but I will enter into the committee report um, some recommendations that came from the Center for Food Safety as recommendations, but that does need to be uh, vetted with the House members who have already begun to take this up. Members, discussion. Chair, thank you for the, thank you for your comments on that, and thank you for having this hearing, and it's a, it's a very uh, important subject for everybody. I think we're all concerned about health and safety, and there's no doubt about that. Um, I'm going to be voting with reservations, and, and my reservations um, are based on, um, you know, there's, if, if we're trying to talk, tackle the health and safety issues, and you know, there's a lot of farmers spraying a lot of things, and I, I don't think we should look at just one particular industry that has, has been discussed. So I think we should look at the global application. And if we need buffer zones around schools, then it should apply to everybody. Uh, I think the uh, exclusions for termite is, is problematic because termites, I think everybody in this house has been, in a, everybody here has been in a house that it was termite treated. And you went into that house the same day they took the bag off the house. So we've all had experience in this. We've all survived it, hopefully. But termite treatment is a, an intensive, heavy application, and there are many houses right adjacent to schools. So I, I don't think we should be, uh, again, parsing these things out. Um, today there is no discussion or questions about um, what is the appropriate setback. Should it be 50 feet, 100 feet, a mile, you know, the other island? Um, how, how far should that be? There was no. There was no educated discussion of that, so I think this this uh, measure lacks that kind of um, uh, critical discussion. I do support additional inspectors. I do support additional and robust reporting. I think that we need the transparency for that. And I, I, that's not problematic. I, we need more outreach and more education. The uh, incident I mentioned in Waialua was a guy that shouldn't have been doing it, but we've got to get him before he does it. So. For those reasons, uh, I want to stay engaged with this. Uh, the conversation has to go forward. We have to do something this year to address these concerns. But, uh, but I do have a lot of reservations, so uh, thank you for allowing me to uh, mention those now. Thank you, Chairman. In fact, uh, my apologies for not mentioning that we will put also in the committee report um, that we'd like to pursue the consideration of exclusion for termite treatment. That was a part of the conversation that, in my notes, I um, neglected to mention. Thank you for that as well. Yes. Chair, I just also want to echo the 
the need to uh, accommodate termite treatment um, because occasionally most houses do need that even though some of those chemicals might be dangerous. It's a one-time and once removed type of treatment and it's simply an impossible situation to prohibit that. So I hope we can accommodate the termite treatments and I hope that we uh, note our concern about any large user of restricted use pesticides, not just agriculture. Notwithstanding our hatred of termites, I do want to protect the wise children, so we're going to recommend moving this bill. Members? May we go to a vote? Are there other comments? That no, I just want to be clear. This is uh, three separate committees, all chairs are, are concurrent with the uh, committee report and the amendments, yes. and then the, the vote will be taken separately by three committees. Yes, thank you. Just for the thing of the public. That's very important. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes, another comment? Sure. Um, I guess I'm going to support the bill moving forward to keep the conversation going, but in addition to the comments made by the other parties, I guess one of the things that I think would be fair to look at is the definition of watershed and how that would impact the um, areas requiring buffers. In fact, in fact, we're going to rely on you um, to work on some watershed definitions. Not to worry about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Members, any other comments or questions? Yes. Um, thank you for um, including in the committee report the combination yes. of um, pesticide use. I think there was also a suggestion about making sure that the schools do have an integrated pesticide management plan. And I don't know how we can um, incorporate that into the committee report. But if we don't have that, I, I understand that Scott and them are working <coughs> on it. But to me, that's critical. That's immediately on the campus. I need to make sure they have something that protects the children. Chair, sure. in fact, thank you for mentioning that. Um, uh, though, because we're in the moment, our next bill with education focuses more on the schools, and I think that is particularly relevant in that bill, but I think it's also relevant here. Okay. This is the omnibus bill, though, so, so for sure, absolutely. So we will include that in our committee report as well. It's a very big recommendation. I appreciate the discussion that uh, we had this afternoon. I, le I learned a lot about pesticides and pesticide usage. I will have to be voting with reservations only because my discomfort is the, the lack of direct correlation between the pesticide use and the, the detrimental effect on, on individuals out there. And considering the Department of Agriculture is going ahead um, with a project on Kauai that will get us a lot more clarity on any kind of direct causation, I wish we could wait for that. I understand um, the, the chairs desire to, to move forward with this. And I do think that if we move too hastily on this, we really could be opening ourselves up to a multitude of lawsuits, which I don't know how we're going to pay for it. We're going to kind of indirectly be condemning land with these bound uh, buffer zones that are still kind of squishy as to what those numbers will, will look like. Uh, so for those reasons, I will be voting with reservations, but appreciate the chair's uh, precautionary approach and not waiting for limbs to fall off and their eyes to start growing on, on people. But uh, looking at, and trying, I'm trying to find the balance between uh, where that fine line is uh, for what is, is a prudent way to approach this issue. So thank you. Thank you. And I'll just wrap up with, I, I, re, I, mean, I really greatly appreciate those comments, just so people understand how it came to the point where I proposed these, you know, this series of measures this year with colleagues. And that was, um, because after watching the two-year process in the counties, I, I wasn't prepared to promote um, this legislation two years ago, but I would be very candid. Um, they have been having that battle discussion, and to be clear, if we don't act and act fairly aggressively, a lot of that work won't get done. And I say this not disparagingly, but because there are so many priorities out there and I'm, I'm sure that our, de our Department of Ag Director could cite 20 very, very valuable priorities. It will not happen. And so from a health immediacy standpoint, because children are going from age one, two years ago, that her baby was one, and who's now three with the diagnosis, in the interval when the county has been stymied in a legal fashion, that's why we're here today. Okay. So uh, recommendation, as we've described, is to go with tech amendments on 793 with those mentions, Chris, in the committee report. Start with the vote from the health committee. Would you need my vice chair? Sorry. Yes. Uh, chair Green. Aye. 
Vice Chair votes with reservations. Senator Baker. Excuse, Senator Gabbard. Aye. Senator Revere. Reservations. Senator Ruderman. Aye. Senator Sloan. Excuse, excuse, Chair, your recommendations adopted. For the Committee on Agriculture, the same recommendations that pass with amendments, the Vice Chair. Okay, calling, calling a vote. Um, chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes uh, with reservations. Senator John Oakland? Aye. Senator Taniguchi? Excused. Senator Thielen? Yes. Senator Wakai? Aye. Reservations. And Senator Sloan? Excused. Carry measure passes. They say the same recommendation for the uh, <coughs> Energy Environment Committee. Chair votes aye. Chair Gunnberg votes aye. Senator Green? Aye. Senator Donald Perry is excused. Senator Howard votes aye. Senator Sloan is excused. The recommendation is adopted by the Environment Committee. Thank you, members. Thank you, everyone. Uh, on Senate Bill 1037, uh, the recommendation okay, that we're um, discussing with my um, co chairs, this bill, as a reminder, because we've been here for several hours together, members, is a much simpler bill. This is just the mandatory disclosure bill. This does not have the buffer zones. This was a um, actually just a much shorter bill. And so some of those comments in the um, forgive me, some of those comments in the committee report would not be relevant as far as um, uh, the watershed definition, for instance. But we will include in this committee report disclosure for combinations of of the uh, pesticides because that that element of disclosure we still recognize as very important. Is there other discussion for this bill on Senate Bill 1037? Seeing none, we'll go to um, a recommendation to pass it with technical amendments uh, for help. Chair Green? Aye. Vice Chair votes with reservations. Senator Baker? Excuse. Senator Gabbard? Aye. Senator Revere? Reservations. Senator Ruderman? Aye. Senator Sloan? Excuse. Chair, your recommendations adopted. Thank you, members. Same recommendation for the Committee of Agriculture. SB 1037. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes with reservations. Uh, Senator Chan Hopan. Aye. 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 Excuse. Senator Thielen. Yes. Senator Wakai. Reservations. And Senator Sloan. Excuse. Measure passes. Same recommendation for the Energy Environment Committee. Chair votes aye. The chair votes aye. Senator Green. Aye. Senator Howe votes aye. Recommendations adopted. Thank you, members. Okay. Uh, members, the recommendation have, uh, for Senate Bill 797 would be to defer that measure. Um, and we will adjourn this hearing, and we will come to our next hearing in two years. Okay, so we have, uh, I mean, though we came here here without much fanfare here, passing uh, these three committees that goes on, we will find out um, where it goes on too um, soon. So uh, there were some reservations. Thanks, Andrea. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm leaving now because I'm, uh, you can catch a ride with me, so I think we will be, uh, there's some other bills, but we are going to, uh, and housing committee to order for the purpose of decision making on three agendas. Agenda number two. There goes Dylan, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm going to move out here. So, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming down. That was great. Okay, it's Dylan from Kauai. Yeah, thank you for filming. Appreciate Aloha it. and mahalo to all the people in Kauai. <laughs> and for coming coming all the way here. It's worth it every minute. Thanks for, thanks for testifying. Okay, we got a bunch of people here, so I guess we're going to be cutting away. Um, we'll find out what committee it goes to next, but obviously it's still alive, a lot of interest in it. Uh, overwhelming public support uh, from the other islands and from Oahu, uh, so that's really good. Again, uh, we're at the uh, Hawaii State Capitol where they don't take testimony via video when they actually could and they should. 
But, you know, that's just me talking. Other counties have it. Big Island has uh, council meetings where you can testify from different places uh, using video. But the state is very Honolulu-centric. And we'll be cutting away. We are here at the Honol uh, Hawaii State Capitol building in downtown Honolulu from the government and financial uh, district of Honolulu. We're trying to...